Dear viewers, thank you for choosing Manhua Compilation Channel. Enjoy watching. The story begins near the beautiful blue Tianyu waterfall. Before us is an incomparable world. Bright lightning in the sky pierces the sky with its radiance and power, reflected in the clear, clear water. The man was sitting on one knee, leaning on it so as not to fall. He was holding his chest with one hand. Apparently there was a serious wound there. Streams of blood flowed onto his second hand, with which he also leaned on the ground, forming a whole bloody wet puddle. Henry, you have been watching me for years. You and I are like brothers. And today, when we were practicing, came from the lips of the wounded man. But he was immediately interrupted by the enemy. Why did you secretly attack me? Blame yourself for being too strong, the man standing in front of him answered. Rest in peace. We will always live in your shadow, he continued to say, looking at the wounded guy. But rest assured, the kingdom for which you are fighting and pursuing will come to us, he said, smiling sarcastically. The man's blood was on his hand, and that didn't stop him from preparing for the next blow. You are dishonest, the wounded man exclaimed in a less loud voice. And without removing his hands from his chest, he tried to rise to his feet. A bright red glow erupted, spreading around Henry. Yellow rays emanated from it. The eternal flame is now mine. I will burn your flesh and bones until you die, he said with a terrible cry, and headed towards the guy. He had already risen to his feet, but Henry's strength began to amaze him again and again. Beams of fiery light lifted his body into the air like a current. You're dead, exclaimed the evil enemy and began to slowly destroy the wounded man. It seemed to crumble into small pieces, disappearing into thin air. First his hand burned to ashes, then his leg, and so he gradually disappeared all over, until the last part of the body, the head, was incinerated, and the man's farewell glance disappeared, as if it had melted. After that it was like white snowflakes scattered around. The position of the stars is shifted. A beautiful view of the ocean, a full moon, a beautiful starry sky, and white yellow-tinged ashes flying around. Huge mountain peaks seem to reach the sky with their mountain peaks. More than 10,000 years have passed. The pleasant, cute city of Tianshui is located on the banks of a huge, beautiful river flowing through it. In a bright courtyard, surrounded by huge, fluffy trees waving their green crowns, there was a family. Brother, what do you mean? The man named George asked the second one, spreading his arms to the sides. We are here to get a divorce, Archie answered. Oscar stood nearby and continued the guy's speech. Brother George, you and I are family from Tianshui City, and I think we shouldn't tolerate this, he said. So, accept my family's divorce, he expressed his intentions, which he was going to bring to life. This way my daughter Florence will be able to go to family gatherings with people with peace of mind. The girl stood with her hands folded on her chest next to her. Florence already came to us when she was little, George answered them continuing to wave his arms in bewilderment. Moreover, the marriage between Florence and my son Theodore is already well known in Tianshui City. If they get divorced and the news spreads, he exclaimed with worry in his eyes. Meanwhile, a girl named Ayla approached them with hot aromatic tea. They will laugh at your family and at me, she began to say. Hey, old man, your son Leo is dead. Do you want my sister to be a widow for years? The girl's brother shouted, standing up for her. My brother Leo is not dead yet, Ayla exclaimed. She almost dropped the tray of tea out of indignation. We will ask the doctor to check this. Leo's situation is definitely lethal. If so, then don't put it off again. Florence, the woman who came with Oscar, intervened. Florence, my brother Leo has been sincere with you for many years. Our family has never treated you badly. You are a cruel, vile woman, the girl said to her face. She was extremely outraged. Shut up! You're adopted. You're just a little better than an ordinary girl, the woman shouted back, clenching her fist in anger. A woman like you deserves punishment, Ayla answered her. She knitted her eyebrows menacingly, bulging her huge sky blue eyes. Isla has no right to talk here. Oscar immediately intervened in their conversation, looking sternly at the girl. Go and see Leo, he continued, and sent the girl to her brother. He waved his hand to show her the way. Ayla sadly lowered her head and, taking her tray of tea, obediently went forward. 
While the girl walked up the steps to leave, the family continued to stand in the yard, discussing further actions. Isla, meanwhile, was already approaching the room where her brother lay. She pushed the door open with her hand, and she went into him. She brought her brother some warm tea. He was lying on the bed under a white sheet. Brother Leo, how are you? His girlfriend asked, folding her arms over her chest. Her eyes sparkled with tears, but she tried to hold them back so as not to upset the boy even more. After all, he was already in serious condition. Let's take the medicine immediately, she turned to the guy, bringing the medicine with some sweet tea. What happened outside? The boy immediately asked her. This is the Shen Yu family. They brought many people to our house for divorce. They also said, the girl began the conversation. But Leo suddenly interrupted her. Why am I dying? This is no longer the case. It's their fault. The boy answered her, tilting his head down. He was very sad. Hey, brother, what do you mean? Ayla asked a counter question. She was very worried. The girl's eyes became twice as large. Now I understand why I couldn't get up for many years. Eventually my energy runs out. It's all the Shen Yu family's plan. Leo told her, In Florence's eyes, I mean nothing to her from beginning to end. She deliberately played with me, the boy said with tears in his eyes. Little by little, she stole my spiritual energy for herself. This woman truly has a snake's heart. I hate her, the guy exclaimed. Tears were streaming down his cheeks. Then suddenly she started coughing. Streams of blood sprayed from the boy's mouth. He didn't feel well at all. The girl opened her eyes wide. Drops of blood splashed onto her face, and the cup of medicine flew down and crashed on the floor. Brother! Brother! Ayla called him. She hugged the boy, leaning him against her. The collar of his white shirt was stained with scarlet blood. Brother, wake up! You can't die! It seems he was poisoned by those around him, my sister thought with horror. Brother, don't die! Brother is a genius in the city and the pride of the family. I am Emperor Luke, who is the leader of the entire world, whose reputation is spread throughout the world. A voice rang out, and a golden-colored round ball appeared in the room, like some kind of small planet. Even if this woman treats you badly, your sister Ayla still needs you. There are too many bad people in this world. Good people are deceived and oppressed. Let me borrow your body today. With your name, I will return to life once again after 10,000 years. To prevent the woman from killing you, I will destroy her soul, the mysterious voice continued to say. Let her kneel before you and die without dignity. A magical voice entered the dying boy. Brother, brother, Ayla called him. She cried bitterly, sitting next to him. For her, he was the dearest and only one in this world. If her brother dies, Ayla will have no one left. The girl continued to shed bitter tears. Oh, I'm alive again, the boy suddenly exclaimed unexpectedly. As if air had been breathed into him, Leo immediately opened his eyes. She is Ayla, the adopted daughter of the family, the boy thought to himself. It seems I inherited this child's memory. A tear was also running down his cheek. It was as if he was trying to remember who was who. Brother Leo, the girl exclaimed. She looked at him with wide eyes as if she didn't understand how this could happen. Brother Leo, fortunately you didn't die, the girl said. Now she was crying with great joy that her brother was alive. Breeding as quickly as possible is also in your favor, so hurry up and do it. This is really, really annoying, brother. Don't be angry, Ayla said out loud. I am fine. Please bring a pen and paper, he asked the girl. And then he smiled sweetly. Oh, do you want to write something? The girl asked him, worried. The boy put his hand on her head, calming her. And so my sister went to get the paper. What will you write, brother? Ayla continued to ask him with interest. I'll write something to save our reputation and self-esteem, Leo answered her, waving his pen with a joyful tone. And so he first thought, collecting the text in his head, and took a brush and began to write. Then he went outside to the family, who never left the yard. They greeted him with great surprise. After all, they were sure that the boy would never get out of bed again. He began to wave his hand, figuring things out on the spot. Brother, knowing that our families have been friends for a long time, I showed you respect, Oscar said, pointing his finger at the guy standing opposite him. Stop bluffing, the brother replied. 
Stop arguing. The Shen Yu family doesn't need to talk about this anymore. Brother Leo has already written a divorce document. Ayla said, holding a rolled up papyrus in her hand. The words are written in black and white, listen, the girl said, and began to read loudly. To the Shenu family, Florence, her heart is like a snake and a scorpion. And I, Leo, don't love her anymore, the little sister finished reading. Divorce document? The vile woman with the heart of a snake immediately exclaimed. Leo, you really are, Oscar whispered to himself. They were all very surprised by this news from the boy himself. If you want to humiliate me, just tell me right away that you don't need to speak for a dead man. Leo is dead. Florence continued to scream. I calmly absorbed the energy of Leo's soul for six years. Now the energy of his soul is in my body? He must have died. The woman thought to herself with cunning in her deceitful eyes. Who said I'm dead? Came a voice behind them. Leo? Turning around and calling his name Ayla. Everyone instantly turned their heads towards the boy. Brother Leo, why did you go out? Florence and the Shen Yu family. The little sister continued to speak. But the guy interrupted her and turned to the Shen family. Do you want me to die? The Shen Yu family is very cruel to me, the boy said. And then he continued his speech. I will divorce Florence and sever all relations with the Shen family, Leo exclaimed, waving his hand in front of their insolent faces. Are you looking for death? Archie shouted. He clenched his fist and contorting his face, attacked the boy, trying to hit him. Since you have not died yet, I will take you to the gates of death, continued the enraged enemy, trying to hit him hard. Not good, Leo answered, and then, like a resourceful snake, dodged a strong blow. Archie staggered, almost falling. The boy, in turn, pushed the evil guy away from him with one movement of his hand. He flew back like a bullet several meters ago. What? Can he still fight with such circumstances? Oscar thought, looking in surprise at what was happening. This is family. I will not tolerate you. Hey, Leo, are you planning to fight with our Shen Yu family? He asked him. The Shen family is very aggressive. Do you really want to kill me? The boy answered him. He was shocked by their meanness and impudence. George, your son is crazy, said Oscar, turning to the man standing next to him. Didn't you guys say that Leo is dead? Now he can take revenge on people? What are you trying to achieve now? He shot back. Shen Yu family, please leave here, the boy's father continued to say. Our family does not welcome you. Leo supported him. Now is not the time to get rid of the Chin family, the man thought to himself. Okay, Chin family, just wait. Oscar answered them. Florence, don't forget your divorce papers. Leo called out to the woman, holding out the papyrus. You! She started turning around, and then she roughly snatched the paper, shining it. Remember my words, I will kill you someday, she exclaimed in rage. Florence, let's go. Don't waste your anger on a dying man, Oscar turned to her. Yes, father. The woman answered him, leaving this yard. A little different from what I had planned, I told Florence to absorb Leo's power so he would be weak and die. Yes, even though he is dying now. Now Leo has lost his talent. The Chin family is just trash, the man thought to himself. Brother Leo, Florence won't leave it that easily. I will always accompany you, Isla told her brother, holding his arm. So now I will cling to you every day, the girl continued, turning to her brother. And he, in turn, coughed again, spattering blood. Brother Leo, Ayla exclaimed. She immediately grabbed it, very worried. Brother, Leo, my sister did not stop. She was very scared for him. After my soul energy has been withdrawn, I must open the door of cultivation and restoration again. I can't waste time to take revenge, the boy said to himself while sitting on the floor in the lotus position. In my past life, I could have made high-level medicinal herbs to help me practice, Leo wondered. Now with this corpse, I can only make a few low-level medicinal herbs to help myself, who is very weak. The boy continued to think about how to help himself at this time. Brother Leo, are you awake? His sister asked, coming closer. Ayla, I'm fine, he answered her, smiling sincerely in response. It really scared me, the girl said. Now you are here, he addressed the girl with tenderness and love. Could you go and buy herbal ingredients, he asked her, raising his index finger up with such an unusual request. Ingredients, the sister asked and lowered her head. 
I don't have money, she answered, blushing slightly. Due to her low status, she receives practically nothing in the Chin family, Leo thought and took out his bag of money. He began to empty the money from the bag. It's the same with Leo, because he couldn't cultivate anymore. His assets are limited, my sister thought about him. The bag of money was quite boring. These are all my assets, buy herbs with this money, the boy said, a little shy and handed her the coins. The girl immediately rushed to the store, and she was already returning satisfied. Brother Leo, I bought the ingredients, she exclaimed smiling. How do you use this? Ayla asked him, unfolding a canvas with pieces of green twigs, fragments of tree bark, and some mushrooms. In addition to this, there were some other stones. These medicinal ingredients are all of low quality, but you can try it, the boy said, scratching the back of his head. We first crushed the volcanic rock, then mixed it with beaded grass so that it could stimulate human potential. And after that, Leo said, pouring the finished powder into an empty vessel. Is this really good? Isla asked in surprise. Be sure, the brother answered her and began to splash the vessel, stirring all the ground ingredients. Suddenly there was an explosion. Sparks flew from the vessel, clouds of gray smoke. Brother Leo, the girl exclaimed. He sat on the floor with disheveled hair, torn pants, covered in soot but with a whole vessel in his hands. But despite this, he smiled sweetly. Brother Leo! Are you okay? Isla asked the boy, quickly running closer to him to make sure everything was okay. It worked! He exclaimed in a loud, joyful voice. The girl shuddered while sitting next to him. It was he who frightened her with his emotions. Ayla, look, I made an impulse discovery, the boy said, turning to his sister. He handed her a vessel with medicine, showing her his creation. Come with me, he suggested to the girl, and took the gentle hand and pulled her along with him. Let's try, he exclaimed. And the two of them ran excitedly forward along the alley, towards a dense green thicket with trees. They approached a blue river that flowed along the forest thicket. And the boy began to pour the healing potion into the water. Some huge bubbles immediately appeared in the water. Leo took off his shirt and lifted his pants above his knees, and took a step forward. The water is so hot, he said. The boy walked forward without fear, testing his new invented medicine with great excitement. Brother Leo, is everything okay? His sister asked, very worried. It's just a little hot. It's nothing compared to my hatred, my brother answered her, blushing a little from the too hot water. He was completely sweating. This is like my eternal flame, thought the boy. But he didn't stop, continuing to move in the chosen direction. He imagined that he was sitting in the lotus position and was completely in control of the situation, as if holding fire in his hands. Can we say that the eternal flame was reborn with me? The boy thought. Meanwhile, my sister stood on the shore, looking at him. Henriel, you tried your best to kill me. But this doesn't mean anything, exclaimed the boy. He turned his gaze to the heavens. Now I'm alive again. Rest assured, you will not forget about this, he said. Leo seemed to rise above the water, sitting in the lotus position. Ah, brother Leo, his soul energy seems to have awakened again, Ilo exclaimed, covering her mouth with her hand. And she became stronger, the girl continued her thought. And the boy seemed to be flying, already moving towards his house. In the end, I awakened even more spiritual energy and again broke through the Kamai layer, the boy said, looking at his hands. Stones are the opening of veins. Martial arts cultivate the body and soul. The body has nine meridians, and each time it opens its own meridians, the soul's energy can be strengthened. In other words, the more people increase their mental energy, the stronger they are. Today, Leo rediscovered the meridians, and he awakened the energy of the soul, the eternal fire. Brother Leo is amazing, Ayla exclaimed, approaching the house with the reborn boy. It's been six years. How much abuse you've suffered, and now you can practice again. Brother Leo, you must appear again as the proud son of our Ching family, the girl said with tears in her eyes. Yes, I know, don't cry, the boy answered her, smiling. I return to the path of cultivation. Would I have succeeded if you hadn't bought me medical ingredients, the boy said, and hugged his sister and stroked her head. Let's go, I'll bring you some good food, the little brother told her raising his index finger up again. Delicious!
These fruits are so delicious! Exclamations were heard in the market. Fresh sugar cane. Boiled corn was heard from all sides, from different counters. Isla, how many snacks do you want to buy? All my hands are already full, the boy said, turning to his sister. Brother Leo hasn't taken me with him for a long time, so let me eat, she answered the impatient brother. In order to speed up my cultivation process, I had to spend a large amount of money on refining the medicinal ingredients. My goal was achieved this time. First, I took the pulse liquid to exchange money. The boy was thinking in the meantime. Okay, let me buy a birthday cake again and come back, said the little sister, turning to face the boy. This girl from the Ching family dared to stand in my way? Suddenly, a rude voice rang out. Move away! The little sister screamed, the food flying out of her hands. A man pushed the poor girl with all his might. Isla? Leo exclaimed, and immediately caught the girl. It hurts, my sister wailed. They are from the Sue family. It was the young master from this family. He was not alone, but with a group of kimono-clad students. Leo, trash like you, do you have the courage to leave the Ching family residence? His master asked, brazenly clasping his hands on his chest. Here are your two glasses of wine, came from the side. Some guy was sitting on the second floor on the summer terrace of a cafe at a table. George brother rest assured, even though my second brother is stupid, he has awakened his soul. And that is enough to deal with trash like Leo, said the first master. Leo, now I want you dead, George exclaimed, smiling maliciously. He bared his teeth, thereby showing his hatred. Leo, let me kill you, the master exclaimed and stood in a stance, preparing to attack. The boy immediately put the bag of groceries on the concrete floor, preparing for self-defense. This reed will be enough to deal with this bad dog, Leo said to his sister, showing a small piece of a stick. He picked up this reed, holding it in front of him. A soft blue haze seemed to appear around him. What? How could he? Aren't all martial arts techniques closed? The master exclaimed, opening his mouth and almost losing his jaw in surprise. Meanwhile, the brother, putting two fists forward, rushed towards the boy. His strength was a huge red bull with strong big horns. Isla, you must remember this. Leo turned to his sister, throwing a serious look at her. And the boy rushed towards the enraged master, who was hiding behind the strength of the Red Bull. He pushed him as hard as he could with his magic cane. If a dog is chasing you, you must hit it with a stick, said the boy. The master flew to the side and plopped down with all his might on the concrete. So he not only left, but also prevents other bad dogs from appearing. The boy continued to explain, standing in front of the guy lying on the asphalt. You are so arrogant, the master exclaimed from the second floor. He immediately descended, as if in flight, and he found himself next to Leo and Ailey. He clenched his fists and stood in a stance. The girl immediately clung to her brother. You insulted my brother, wounded him, and now I want to take your life. The guy continued to shout indignantly. He extended his finger, pointing it at Leo. The younger brother was defeated, and his brother will take revenge, David. Do you also want me to kill you? He turned to the master in response. Wait, Ailey, let's go, the boy said, taking her hand. Leo, you can't leave, David immediately exclaimed, stopping the guy. Now is not the time to fight him, otherwise it will delay our business today. In front of us is a sign with the inscription, Jin Jin Pavilion, Jin Jin Treasury. This was Chin Jin's treasure house. We have arrived, Leo said to his sister. They entered this house. Sir, miss, what do you want? The man at the reception addressed them. Leo, now you have nowhere to run, exclaimed the master, who suddenly appeared as if out of nowhere, chasing him. Jin Pavilion does not welcome you, said one of the employees of this treasure house, stopping him. The rules of the Jin Pavilion do not allow outsiders to use violence, said the second employee with great indignation. Is this Jin Pavilion, the largest treasury and trading place in the city of Tianshui? asked their master. David, I advise you not to contact me anymore, so as not to endanger yourself and the entire Zhu family, Leo said to the guy burning with rage. After your soul was restored, you became so arrogant, the master muttered, gritting his teeth. Today I won't break the rules of the pavilion. I'll just wait for you later, said the dissatisfied boy, and headed towards the exit. What's all the fuss? someone asked. 
someone was quickly descending the steps from the second floor. Mistress, forgive your brother. They created problems, one of the employees said, bowing to her. Problems? Isn't this Leo, the young master of the Qing family? The woman who came down immediately asked. They said that Leo's body meridians were closed. How did he recover so quickly with strong breathing? He must be very lucky, thought the boy, with a mysterious look. Apparently, Mr. Leo is here, and this little girl, Isley, has a long way to go. Mr. Leo, please go upstairs to discuss everything in more detail. The mistress of the house turned to the boy. They went upstairs to the second floor and sat down at the table. The guys were brought a cup of hot, fresh tea. Pulse opening fluid? asked the woman, extending her hand to the vessel standing on the table. Can a bottle of liquid open the meridians? Master Leo, are you playing with me? The owner of the treasure house continued to be interested. Of course not. If the store owner doesn't believe it, she can try. The boy boldly suggested, making a hand gesture. Let Johnny come, the woman ordered, clapping her palms several times. Miss, what do you want? A gray-haired man asked her as he entered the room. This is an old servant who has been looking after me for years. He has no talent for cultivation since childhood, the mistress explained to him. According to Mr. Johnny, while he drinks this liquid, can he abandon these meridians and each begin his own path of improvement? The woman asked a question to a boy named Leo. If there is no basis for development, then just one sip will open the way for the development of martial arts. The boy immediately answered her without hesitation. Joe, drink a little, the hostess ordered, handing him a vessel with liquid. He immediately grabbed the vessel with the potion and began to absorb the liquid in it. I feel fullness all over my body, said the grandfather. He groaned and raised his head up, arching his back. How is this possible? I haven't heard of such a magical liquid, the woman exclaimed, covering her mouth with her hand in great surprise. Mistress Olivia, you must believe, the boy answered her holding a glass of liquid in his hands, from which flowed gentle gray steam. It's amazing. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I would never have believed it, the woman said, throwing up her hands. I feel 20 years younger, said the grandfather, breaking into a dance with a joy. Mistress Olivia, are you going to buy this? One bottle for 12,000 silver coins. He turned to the woman with a business proposal. 12,000 is not that expensive. Can I have 30 bottles? She asked in response. 30 bottles, the boy asked, not believing his ears. Any problems? The owner of the treasure house asked a counter question. It doesn't matter. As long as the owner provides me with enough raw materials, I can make 30 bottles in one day, the boy said, raising his index finger up, smiling. Wonderful, the woman exclaimed joyfully. And then a smile lit up on her face. Johnny, prepare a pen and ink for Master Leo, Olivia ordered. In addition, 90,000 other silver notes as a deposit for Mr. Leo? The woman continued to give orders. The boy, in turn, was happy with such calculations. Brother Leo, why hasn't he returned yet? Isla was thinking meanwhile, waiting for the boy. He's back, she suddenly exclaimed when she saw her little brother. Tomorrow there will be a big auction in the gin pavilion and the search for the pulse in your hands will be the main focus, Olivia warned him. Well, then our family will definitely come, Leo answered her with confidence. This little girl is waiting for you, Master Leo, the hostess said to the boy, pointing to his sister. Isla, we'll go home, the boy reassured her. Okay, the girl answered obediently, smiling sweetly at her little brother. Miss Olivia, my sister and I are going first. Goodbye, store owner. They turned away to the woman, saying goodbye. Mr. Leo, let me take you, Olivia suggested to the boy. Leo! Yes, it's him, thought Florence, passing by, finding herself right there nearby. How did Gin Pavilion allow garbage to enter? She asked the owner. Rejected woman, Leo said, throwing a contemptuous look at her. What are you looking for? The last time you publicly humiliated me, the woman figured out, pointing her finger at him. Today I will take care of you. Florence continued to threaten him. She took a step forward, as if wanting to attack the guy. But then the owner of the pavilion instantly stopped the angry woman, standing in front of Leo. Miss Florence, your fifth-grade ice phoenix spirits are really strong. She turned to the woman who was attacking the boy, 
But Jin Pavilion has its own path. Does Miss Florence really intend to become an enemy of Jin Jin Pavilion? Miss Olivia asked the question directly to the woman's forehead. Sorry, forgive me, Mrs. Olivia. I'm not deliberately, not deliberately breaking the rules, she answered the owner of the pavilion, and then stopped. Okay, Jin Jin Pavilion is an open door place for business, she added finally to what was said. Take Mr. Leo back. The owner gave orders to two employees of the pavilion. Miss Florence, please come with me to the inner hall. Olivia further addressed the woman. If it weren't for the mistress, I wouldn't have spared you, thought the woman with the heart of a snake, watching the boy with a sidelong glance full of evil and hatred. Outcasts like you will regret their choice in the future, Leo said quietly, grinning in response to the woman's sidelong glance. Miss Florence, follow me. I have a good thing in the Jinjin Pavilion. Olivia turned to her. The opening liquid, the impulse that has just arrived, can help others open the meridians. I want to know if you are interested. The owner continued to talk about the innovation in her store. One bottle for 13,000 silver coins, they said. Stupid. I only spent 20 silver to make the liquid, and Florence is ready to pay 13,000, Leo thought as he left. However, it's not good for the Shen Yu family to find out about the magical effects of the liquid. At tomorrow's auction, the Shen family will definitely spend all their money, the boy thought further, holding his chin with his hand in thought. At that time, let my father work with me to play this game and get a lot of money from the Shen Yu family, Leo concluded. What did you say? There was a loud, dissatisfied exclamation from somewhere in the depths of the house. Leo really rediscovered the pulse of his martial arts? The father exclaimed, eyes wide. He was very surprised by such incredibly good news. Father, how can I lie to you? Today, Brother Leo brutally beat the bastard Shuo, and many people saw him on the street. Ayla told her father about what happened, laughing. Leo, when did you study medicine? The father asked the boy. I studied at the school of Tao, but at that time I just wanted to awaken the soul and not go deeper into it. The guy answered him. Before, in order to restore my martial arts, I hastily practiced my medical knowledge, and a miracle happened, he said, with deep inspiration and excitement. After a few moments, I was able to come to my senses as before, the boy continued. His eyebrows furrowed slyly as this all turned his life upside down. Surprisingly, the genius of my Qing family will never fall easily, the father exclaimed in a joyful voice. He clenched his fists with delight and pride for his gifted son. Oliver, you did everything, but you didn't know that our son became a genius. Our son became a genius in medicine, said George. Meanwhile, Oscar, Archie's father, was walking around the house with a very thoughtful look. Father, the fluid to open the pulse that Florence brought worked very well, exclaimed joyfully running into Billy's room. Bill is the youngest grandson of the Shen family and turns 18 this year. As soon as I let Bill drink, he just went through his first martial arts, Oscar thought. Not bad. The Jin Pavilion was indeed a force that spread throughout the Tianan Empire, and all such mysterious things could be obtained, Oscar expressed his opinion. My father, I also heard that tomorrow at the auction, Jin Pavilion will sell the last 30 bottles of pulse opening liquid this year, Bill told him. Such a good thing should not be missed by the Shen Yu family, his father answered him thoughtfully. With 30 bottles of liquid, Enough for the Shen family to make another one. Brilliant! The father exclaimed in a joyful voice. And so the Shen Yu family arrived on the specified day and time for the great auction. So many people, have they come for the liquid to open the pulse? Bill turned to his father, worried that they would still get this brilliant, necessary thing. They are just villagers. In this Tian Shui city, no one can compete with our Shen family. His father answered him, calming him down. Mr. Oscar, please go to your place, the pavilion employee spoke to him. The Ching family is here, the man noticed out of the corner of his eye and followed the pavilion employee to his place. Jin Pavilion has good service, he thought. Ching family? They also came for the liquid, the man did not stop thinking. Apparently, he was very worried that his family might not get this magic potion today. Very annoying. I met Oscar's old dog again. Leo turned to his father. He was clearly starting to get a little nervous. Old ghost George, it seems you want to give your child Leo opening fluid to prolong his life, Bill said impudently. If the Ching family has problems with money, we will not lose to you guys. George answered him calmly. Okay, 
I'll wait and see, Oscar said. His gaze was full of anger and hatred towards this family. He clearly could not contain his emotions. And then there was a loud ringing sound, like a wooden hammer hitting a huge drum. The official auction begins! A loud voice echoed throughout the building. The hall was full of visitors. A lot of people really came. Everyone cast sidelong glances at each other in silence. Thank you all for being able to attend the Gin Pavilion auction today, Olivia said, bending down a little, showing her greeting to those who came. One bottle of pulse opening liquid can open martial arts pulse. There are 30 bottles of pulse opening liquid with a starting price of 300,000, said the store owner. So the auction begins, she announced the opening of the lot. One bottle of impulse opening liquid can open a self-defense impulse. Is this real? Questions began from the audience. Yes, someone else shouted from the audience. Young Master Leo discovered his martial arts a few days ago, and his strength returned because he drank it, the man continued. Yes, yes, I saw that he beat Shue yesterday in the market. Shouts were heard. 350,000 those present at the auction began to raise prices. 380,000, 400,000. The price kept rising and rising. 400,000 won, 400,000 too, the hostess's voice sounded. But then she was interrupted again. 800,000, a young boy from the Shen Billy family shouted, raising his hand. He couldn't miss such a chance. The Shen Yu family is really rich. Our Qing family will add 200,000 Leo. His father suggested that he increase the rate. One million, the boy said, casting a sly glance at the Shen family. For the trash Qing family, I really want to spend a lot of money, the father said, turning to Bill. He was lucky that he did not die, so he drank a bottle of liquid to open the pulse and opened his meridians. His son answered him. He really considers himself a genius of the past, the guy said. He just started cultivating again, but I have already created a fifth grade spirit. He and I are very different from each other, Florence answered him, smiling slyly like a snake. It's not for nothing that the woman with the heart of a snake called her Leo. One and a half million came from the Qing family. Two million, Shenu family. Two and a half million, again from the Qin family. Three million, exclaimed Bill's father. He was already very angry. And he wanted to get this liquid at any cost, even fundamentally so that it would not reach the Qing family. Then I'll raise it to three and 100,000 million, Leo said, raising his finger up. Enough, three and a half million, Oscar interrupted him, pouring out sweat. Mistress, please start the countdown, the boy turned to Olivia. Okay, she answered, smiling. Three and a half million. The first knock, the woman said, raising her hand. Three and a half million, second knock, said Olivia. This is madness. This is too high a price. Really rich. Three and a half million, third knock. George was already drenched in sweat from head to toe. Meanwhile, Leo broke into a smile. Sold, exclaimed the woman, hitting the table with a hammer for the third time. This is how the deal took place at the auction. Congratulations to the Shen family for receiving 30 bottles of pulse opening liquid, and I hope that the children of the Shen family will open their cultivation. Olivia pushed the speech. Thank you to the owner of the pavilion, Oscar replied, standing to his feet and thanking the woman. Now, the entire Tian Shui city will have genius children, and everything must be decided by my Shen family. George, what are your demands on me now? He turned to Father Leo with an important look. Old thief, next time you won't win, don't be too proud, George answered him. Let's go, he called his family, and they headed towards the exit. With 30 bottles of artifacts opening, the Shen Yu family can raise many geniuses, while the Qing family will automatically be led by arrows, Bill said. The group of dogs has left. The Shen Yu family has been placed above the Qing family, Florence said. She laughed a cheeky grin. Today everything went according to your plan. We received more than three million from the Shen family. George began the conversation. However, if we allow the Shen family to develop brilliant martial arts, Leo, the man continued, thoughtful. Father, calm down. With more than millions from the Shen family, I will exchange everything for high quality medicinal ingredients from the Jin Pavilion, which will be enough for me to restore my strength and become stronger, he answered his father, calming him down. Fabulous. Compared to the past, 
My family style is now more contrasting than the Shen families, the father said with a satisfied grin. Quickly move everything, a noise was heard in the yard. There was a lot of movement going on there. People were carrying boxes and vessels, and work was in full swing. Brother Leo, the medical ingredients in Jin Pavilion have arrived. In addition, they also specially sent a number of rare medicinal ingredients, said Ayla, turning to her brother. In any case, with all this, I can force Florence and the Shen family to kneel, the boy said with a satisfied smile. However, Brother Leo, will there be a big explosion like before? His girlfriend asked. Of course not, I carefully studied medicine, the boy answered her, showing her a large book. Oh, a medical book for beginners? The girl was surprised, looking at the textbook. Everything will be fine, she exclaimed, blushing a little, as if she was shy from excitement. The boy was already stirring the magic potion. The effect of ordinary liquid to open the pulse is too slow. I must make a strong medicine, the boy decided for himself. Red blood ginseng, snake spirit fruit, blue snow lotus. From these ingredients, I made a high-level elixir, Leo thought, doing the calculations. It will not only help me open the pulse of self-defense, but can also strengthen my physical strength. The boy continued to think. What? Snow? The guy was surprised, looking around. White, fluffy snowflakes were indeed swirling. How can it snow in the summer? Eiler exclaimed, approaching her brother. No, this is the master. Leo answered her immediately. Many large white birds circled around. They flapped their wings, and white snow fell on their snow-white feathers. This is a third-class demonic beast, ice-winged eagles dragons, the boy said looking at them. They headed to the Shen family. The boy continued to watch the huge, beautiful birds. This is bad, said the boy. He stood there very thoughtfully. This foreshadowed something very bad. Run! People around shouted. Birds flew over their heads. People ran away, covering their heads with their hands. Ice-winged Orlodoacons, exclaimed the guard of the main city of Tianshui. He stood at the top of the tower with his warriors. Glacier Valley. This is a legendary sect that can overthrow the county. How did they appear in Tianshui City? Said the city owner, Li. It turns out that this is exactly what the Tianshuang Imperial Warriors are like. Under the power of the ice-winged eagle dragon, they are like ants, exclaimed the rider of one of the birds. Robert? Don't make any noise. This is Francesca's sister's house, replied the rider of the second bird. Lucas. Two special envoys are coming to our lands and our Shen family welcomes you. A conversation could be heard from the house. Florence and Oscar greet two special envoys from the Glacial Valley, Oscar said, leaning in front of them. Brother Shen entered the River Valley. Everyone became a family, Lucas said. Little brother Bill, we are here to take him to the Glacial Valley, said Robert. Oh no, I didn't think that the Shen family had anything to do with the Glacial Valley, Ayla said spreading her arms to the sides. Our Qing family will be in danger. We should quickly tell our father, the girl said with fear in her eyes. This is indeed a little problematic, but telling father now would only make the Qing family worry, little brother answered her. Brother Leo, what should we do? His sister asked worriedly. Now my main task is to quickly restore strength. Only when my talent shines in the Tian Empire will our Qing family find refuge in the Black Flame Orthobox. The boy reassured her, clenching his fist with confidence. Isla, now I'll retreat. Please don't let anyone bother me, he asked his sister, looking into her eyes. I'll help you guard the door, the girl answered him. Brother Leo, I believe that you will save the Qing family from the crisis, she said, also confidently clenching her small fist. After three days and three nights, the high-level elixir I made was merged with my body. Now my body is as strong as iron, the boy exclaimed. I also opened two martial arts pulses in one breath and stepped into the fifth sphere of the opening pulse, Leo concluded, being pleased with his results. When a warrior is lucky, the power of martial arts opening will flow to the Beihuai point to the table of light. Isla, he turned to his sister, pushing the door to her room. It's strange. Where did this little girl go? The boy asked. And then he heard someone calling out to him. Sir, young master, something just happened in the Qing family. Mrs. Ayla asked me to wait for you here. The owner called her into the hallway. The young man turned to Leo. Did something happen in the Qing family? What's going on? Hurry up! The boy immediately exclaimed, placing three hands on the guy's shoulder. 
Patriarch, you are so confused, said a man, turning to George. Don't you understand the situation in Tianshui City? You took all the treasures of the Qing family from the Shen family for nothing. You destroyed the Qing family. The Qing family elder Edward continued to say, What does our Qing family want to do? George asked in response to the second elder of the Qing family Neo. I think it would be better to give up Leo in order to crush the Shen family. Apologize to the Shen family and give them half of the Qing family's business in Tianshui City. So, be confident in them, the elder said, raising his index finger up. What? exclaimed George. He slammed his palm on the table, knitting his eyebrows in bewilderment and anger rushing through him. What are you saying? Are you going to sell the Qing family to the Shen family? The man began to be indignant. He was simply horrified by such impudence. Well, I have no choice but to grit my teeth and let your daughter soak in the bath with me, Edward said, spreading his arms to the sides. We have an obligation to protect the Qing family. Now the Shen Yu family is close to the Ice River Valley sect. This is a fatal outcome for the Qing family, the man objected. My brother, you are only protecting your son. The Qing family is not yours. We are both still here. Elder Neo began to shout, pointing his finger at him. What did the Shen family give to both of you? You have come to overthrow my father by force. The girl stood up for George. The person who knows current affairs is Dojunji. The Shen Yu family just gives us a way of life, Neo said, scratching his goatee. If you continue to be so confused, then the Qing family will only be destroyed by fate. The second elder intervened. Meanwhile, Leo was already approaching where this whole argument was taking place. He knitted his eyebrows and looked at the elders with anger in his eyes. Father, Ayla, you don't need to deal with this garbage. They were just a group of greedy people who were afraid of life and death. They were not worthy of being members of the Qing family, Leo spoke out. He stood up for his family, not allowing the elders to unjustly wrong his family. You, Leo, you dared to come in too, said Edward, turning to the guy. You started this problem. You offended the Shen family. Neo joined. Ricci, kill Leo for me and take him for the Shen family, Neo exclaimed. Yes, father. The son immediately answered him obediently. At first, you were the first genius in the Qing family. I was just a stepping stone to success, said a guy named Ricci. Today I, he continued, and jumped a couple of meters in the air and prepared to attack the boy. I'll return everything back, he exclaimed, and began to approach, preparing to strike. The image of a huge yellow tiger appeared behind him. Kamai Kingdom Layer 7, Tiger Spirit Fiery Red, Second Grade. Brother Leo is in danger, George said, completely sweating from the experience. Ricci, I didn't expect that you had abilities. Leo answered him and took up his magic cane. He pulled the wand out in front of his face, losing it between his fingers. A blue transparent light sparkled around. Bright rays illuminated everything around. You're only level three, you'll die, Ricci said, laughing on his lips. And he rushed at him with a tiger roar. What? The boy asked. And his wand began to work miracles, as if there were many more of them. A bright orange-blue fire illuminated the brown reeds. The boy pushed his opponent away with one well-aimed blow to the chest. He flew off, rising in the air. Ricci turned over with a backflip from Leo's powerful blow. The boy, meanwhile, wielded one stick of reed as if it were ten. And the enemy, after a coup in the air, flew onto the cold concrete floor. My child, are you okay? Neo asked him. Hey kid, what martial arts have you learned? Edward turned to Leo. A few days ago, I found a book on the street called Martial Arts, Sticks. Do you want to learn? Unfortunately for you, I won't teach you. He answered sarcastically to the man. You are a fearless animal, Edward exclaimed. He was crazy with the anger that surged through him. Do you want problems with me? He continued shouting to the whole yard. My son is the genius of the family. He will help the Qing family shine in the future. George intervened in the conversation. Do you deserve to be called an elder? You are just afraid that the Shen family will be angry with you and leave the Qing family. However, you destroyed the entire Qing family, the eldest of them. Dennis suddenly said unexpectedly, this is us, let's go, the other elders said with their heads down. Since Big Brother says so, we don't need to stay here anymore, they decided. 
In the future, when the Qing family is destroyed, don't blame us for not warning you, Edward said as he left. This is truly a sin. Before the face of life and death, blood relations are very weak, Dennis continued speaking, turning to Leo. The Shen Yu family started their own problems. How is this? Dennis exclaimed, waving his hands. If the Ice River Valley master came, how would the Qing family deal with them? He asked. Leo, meanwhile, approached her frightened sister and hugged her shoulders, looking tenderly into her eyes. Don't worry, father. I already have a plan on how to deal with them, the boy said. He was confident in his words. Isla, have you changed your clothes? Leo asked his sister, looking at her. The sister had just left the room after changing clothes. Brother Leo, she said, a little embarrassed. This little girl is actually a piece of pure jade. You have grown big. This is great, the boy exclaimed, looking at his sister. Isla, I'll teach you to practice when you're ready. The brother continued to tell the girl, admiring his sister. Wait, brother Leo, the girl began to scream. But it was too late. He threw it into some wooden barrel full of water. Now we have enemies. Brother Leo should not train me, but you must improve your development. Isla answered him, emerging from the water. Stupid girl, now the Qing family is divided, and I have every right to make you an assistant in my work. I will add the elixir that I used, Jade, which purifies the dark body into the water, he said to his sister, pouring the liquid into the barrel. I will give you the Chenkun pulse opening technique. Remember it well, the boy continued. The pulse of ordinary martial arts, we know that there are nine martial arts pulses in the body. But in my past life, I was lucky enough to open the yin and yang veins, which helped me go through the 12 pulses of martial arts. However, later I became the emperor of martial arts, learned about myself and discovered six new nadis of the art, Leo said. Why do I find out the truth now? The boy asked. Are you saying that the young master of the Qing family has truly mastered Xuan level martial arts? One of the giant bird riders exclaimed. My brother and I do not dare to lie to the two envoys, the elders answered, bowing their heads before them, that they had returned home. This is a good and rare thing, one of the envoys said, smiling slyly. Martial arts techniques are divided into basic levels from high to low, sky, earth, xuan, and yellow. And each level is divided into three classes, namely the upper, middle, and lower classes, the messenger continued to tell. Two brothers, please help the Shen family. Bill tearfully begged before them. Leo was just trash at first, but he dared to divorce my sister Florence publicly, and now he has a high level of martial arts. Please help the Shen family. The guy continued to beg for protection from the two brothers. Little brother Bill shouldn't panic. We won't let the Qing family, one of the guides replied. Take it easy. These are just martial arts at the Zhuan level. The second supported him. Thank you. Bill laughed in response. He was clearly panicking because of his own fear of the brave and strong boy Leo. Edward, Neo, you guys quickly go to the city and keep an eye on the Ching family. As soon as Leo comes out, let me know immediately, Bill ordered. Yes, the men answered him obediently. I will personally bring these two envoys, the guy whispered, twisting himself into a malicious and mean smile. In front of us is the estate of the Ching family. Here Leo is standing in front of a barrel of water, watching his little sister. After all, he will now be the girl's teacher. The situation is stable. Ayla is really a good vessel, the boy said, smiling. He watched the girl with his arms crossed over his chest. The Shen Yu family is truly a wolf in sheep's clothing. They allowed Florence to absorb my cultivation and form fake phoenix spirits to open the Ice River Valley sect and want to completely destroy the Qing family, Leo concluded. It's a pity that they miscalculated, and with my strength as a true genius, I can definitely make you very strong, the boy continued to think. At that time, the sect that came to call was not under the Ice River Valley, he thought. Meanwhile, a man was approaching the huge pavilion. He walked up the steps, the guards slept standing near the gate, and the man was already banging on the huge iron door. Who are you? the guards asked, waking up abruptly from a strong knock. Jin Pavilion is closed, please come back tomorrow said the guards with huge batons, addressing the unexpected guest. I'm in a hurry. Tell the boss to come out and see me, the man exclaimed in response. He was wearing a long cloak with a hood over his head. And he himself, with his powerful strength, opened this huge heavy door. 
Everything around lit up and sparkled with the powerful blow of the man. Someone has broken into Jin Pavilion. How dare you create disturbances in the Jin Jin Pavilion? You are looking for death. One of the store employees asked the man who entered. Who's in charge here? Come out! exclaimed the unexpected night guest in an orderly tone. If you don't come out, I will kill all the people, the formidable man continued to say, and with all his might he moved forward around the room. Wide streams of white smoke stretched around him, like some kind of magic. Why can't I move? asked one of the employees. The rest of the guards also stood motionless. Stop hurting my people! Olivia exclaimed, coming down from the second floor. This girl is in charge of the pavilion. Top grade yellow martial arts level red lotus step. What business do you want to meet with this little girl? She turned to the man. Look at this recipe, the named guest answered her. And he handed the owner of the pavilion some folded paper. Olivia, looking with some wary eyes, reached out with her hand for the papyrus. Isn't this the recipe of this young master Leo? The girl asked a counter question to the named guest. What is your relationship with young master Leo? She asked him again. Leo, this is the student I accepted a few days ago. The man answered her. He put his hand on his beard, tugging at it. His look was very thoughtful. Therefore, I want to ask you to help me. He turned again to the owner of the pavilion. But, she began to say. And having risen a little in the air, she moved back. Bright white rays of light emanated from it. He also flew into the air and approached Olivia. He flew very close, looking into her frightened eyes. The red lotus step is a good technique. But you can't leave, little girl. You can't get out of this gentleman's hands, the strange man said, taking her hand. You don't need to worry. You just need to help me do something small, the guest continued to explain to her. You will go and tell the Black Fire School that there are good vessels in the Ching family, he explained to the girl what needs to be done. The recipe will be given to you as a gift, he said lastly. And the man turned around and walked towards the exit. The Ching family has good vessels. So this is Leo, Olivia concluded to herself. Meanwhile, the man was already outside the gates of the huge pavilion. Now it's all over, he said, removing his hood from his head. Then he stopped and began to remove some film from his face. It was a protective mask of another person. All we have to do is wait. Great show, Leo exclaimed. He turned out to be the same uninvited overnight guest in Olivia's pavilion. Meanwhile, a chariot was driving along a quiet street of the city, passing by neat houses. The driver slowly urged his horse forward. Why haven't we heard from the Ching family for several days now? Asked a man named Neo. And he opened the curtain while standing at the window. He looked out into the street with curiosity. If Leo doesn't show up, Mr. Bill will definitely be angry. The cowardly Neo continued to think, and the chariot kept moving forward. Another carriage was driving towards her. Why are you here? Leo has not yet appeared at the main entrance, said the man from the chariot, opening the curtain addressing the man from the second carriage. Second elder brother. Don't worry, I left a man near the main entrance to keep an eye on him. The man answered him. The Ching family has gained enemies, so they won't leave the house so easily. Waiting is not the best idea, Edward said. What are you talking about? Neo asked him. I have a solution, the man answered him. What? Neo asked, interested. They had already gotten out of the chariot, talking to each other. Let's first pretend to our elder brother that we admitted our mistakes, and then we'll deceive him and send Leo and the Ching family away from Tianshui City, Edward told him about the cunning plan. When Leo leaves the house, Mr. Bill will have time to finish with him, continued the sneaky cunning man. Cunning, Neo answered him. He also smiled wickedly as he listened to his brother's plan. Let's do this, the brother finished. And the two of them went to the estate. Neo pushed the large heavy gate with his hand. Some powerful purple lightning struck them. They sparkled as if pierced by electricity. Meanwhile, lightning struck the roof, and people around ran away in different directions. They fled wherever they could. This is very bad! Bring the water quickly! Screams were heard all around. Please help! Was heard from the other side. Grab the buckets! People shouted. There was panic and bustle all around. It was necessary to put out the fire as quickly as possible. Leo was sitting indoors in the lotus position. He seemed to be meditating. Opening of the ninth pulse, the boy whispered. He rose up into the air while sitting in the same position. There was a lot of white gentle smoke around him. 
people who have learned the nine arts of chakra began to break through their vision. But for me, this is just the beginning, the boy thought, closing his eyes. I use the Emperor's Pulse opening technique to release the nine unlocked skills. Leo continued to meditate. All, bring water, faster! He heard loud exclamations of people. What happened outside? The boy asked. He became wary, and then he opened the door and went out into the street. He flew out like a bullet, leaving the threshold. There, lightning flew from the sky, descending like a fire onto the roof of the house. Explosions, fire, smoke. This is a sign of the awakening of the spirit of martial arts, the boy exclaimed in surprise. Ayla, the boy said, and immediately rushed towards the burning house. He ran as hard as he could. Ayla, where are you, Ayla? He called his sister without stopping. The guy was seriously scared. He entered the room, continuing to call his sister, but the girl did not answer. Shards of stones flew at him from above. He found himself under a broken roof of a house. He was immediately pushed straight to the floor. He fell and rose to his feet again with lightning speed. Leo, are you okay? What's going on? The excited father turned to him, touching his hand. Father, said the boy with some anxiety in his voice. This is the awakened spirit of Yin, he exclaimed. Awakened spirit? Yin is also a genius, George answered with great surprise. Isla stood with her eyes closed, thinking about something. Her hair was flying around, and a haze of white light enveloped the girl. Streams of sweat ran down the girl's face. She continued to think without opening her eyes, and bright purple lightning flickered around. Leo looked at her with great surprise. This building is completely destroyed. I heard that a disaster struck the Qing family. Their residence was destroyed by lightning. This is true? What did the Qing family do to make lightning strike them? Asked one of the elders. I think the Shen Yu family sent lightning at them because they wanted the collapse of the Qing family, the man answered. This looks like revenge. Just look at the situation. The Shen family's residence was not as badly damaged by lightning as the Qing family, the man continued to reason. Good news, Mr. Bill, Neo exclaimed, running to the estate. The Qing residence suddenly turned into ruins due to lightning, Neo said, overjoyed. Who are you anyway? Bill wondered, looking at the man who entered. Neo was completely disheveled, as if he had put a wig on his head. Wait, what? Encouraging changes in the sky, I'm afraid. I'm afraid this is a spiritual awakening above the sixth level, said the two brother guides. Brother, Leo is increasing his spiritual power again? Bill asked the riders of the huge birds, spreading his hands. I think no. His spirit was destroyed long ago, and it is impossible to resurrect him. He could not do it, said Robert. That's right. There are no records of people who were able to resurrect their spirit twice, Lucas answered him. This means that heaven really helped our Shen family, Bill said with an insidious smile. Brothers, come with me. Let's see for ourselves what happened to the Qing family, they decided and headed in that direction. At the same time, a distant place, a hidden, magical land. Two girls are standing next to each other. I feel it, said one of them. They walked as if across the sky. This is the resurrection of Miss, said the third girl watching them. Go and tell the elder, she continued to say, pointing her finger to the side, and two white transparent trains stretched in an arc from the heavenly house somewhere down from the sky. God bless the Ching family, George exclaimed, spreading his arms to the sides. They watched as Ayla rose up and glowed with a yellow light, a new genius appeared in the Qing family at a decisive moment. Exclamations could be heard all around. It looks like something went wrong, Leo said. Very unpleasant, Ayla moaned. She closed her eyes in pain. Bright streams of fiery rays swirled around. The girl suddenly screamed. She was pierced by yellow lightning. It was as if she couldn't control herself. No, the spirit is out of control, they shouted around. Everything was glowing and flickering around. Father, order everyone to leave here immediately, Leo exclaimed and rushed to help his sister. He rushed like lightning to save the poor girl. A blue transparent reflection of blue cold fire flowed from it. Now I can only use eternal fire to stabilize her spirit, the boy thought. Two streams of rays met in the middle of the path. Yellow pouring from the girl and blue from Leo, who rushed to the rescue. Isla, quickly calm down, the boy exclaimed, stretching his hand forward. He raised his palm up fingers open. 
His hand emitted even more bright light. Be careful, Ayla, said Leo. He moved as close to her as possible. The girl still had her eyes closed. Look, it seems the lightning is disappearing, exclaimed voices nearby. What happened to Miss Isla? They asked from the sidelines. Brother Leo, the girl whispered in a weak voice. Ayla, you're okay now, her brother answered, holding her by the waist so she wouldn't fall. Because the girl was a little weak. Leo, what's wrong with Ayla? The frightened father immediately rushed to them and asked. The boy slowly lowers his sister. Calm down, father. She's fine. Ayla didn't know how to control her spirit, so she lost control over it. The boy answered, already smiling. The worst is over. Father, forgive me. I completely destroyed our family's residence. The girl turned to her father. She lowered her head guiltily. I ask my father to punish me, the girl said, falling to her knees with her head bowed. We can rebuild our residence, George immediately reassured her. As long as you are okay, the Ching family can shine again, her father said to her affectionately, so that Ayla would not believe herself anymore. Her father looked at her with a serious and at the same time affectionate look. The possessions of the Ching family have turned into ruins. Today it is time to destroy you too, said a loud male voice. Leo immediately turned around. He heard what was being said around him. The girl also perked up her ears. Look here, exclaimed the man. There were some debris all around, glowing with yellow fire. It seems that the Ching family is truly cursed, said Bill, mocking the family. Standing nearby were two brothers who had come with a guy. How is my family related to your dogs? Leo asked, folding his arms over his chest. Leo, watch your language. I want you and your family to completely disappear today, the guy continued to say, pointing his finger. How dare you? George exclaimed in response. He knitted his eyebrows and looked menacingly at the vile bill. You can only touch the Ching family through my corpse, the man continued. The third level of the spirit of fire snakes, George said, and prepared to attack. Behind him was a huge red snake. This man, Bill whispered to himself. He became very tense, contorting his impudent face. Brothers, he turned to the conductors. Young Master Bill, rest assured, only you can deal with Leo, Lucas answered him. No one will dare to disturb you because we are with you, Robert supported him. The strength of both is terrifying. The guys seemed to have changed. They were in rays of purple light. The back was low, and purple lights were flying around. Are they from the Valley of Glaciers? asked George. He began to worry a little. After all, the guys were probably stronger, especially since there were more of them. Meanwhile, Leo approached his father from behind. He put his hand on his shoulder. It was a gesture of support. Father, you don't need to worry, the boy told him. He smiled, making it clear that everything would be fine. I've dealt with Bill enough times already, said the boy. He was completely confident in his abilities in this situation. Stop talking, Bill exclaimed furiously. Fang of the Ice Lion, spirit of the third level, the boy said in response. Even if you have risen to the ninth level without a strong spirit, all efforts are in vain, continued the evil guy. Behind him was his force in the form of a huge fanged beast. Ice Lion Strike, Bill exclaimed and began to attack Leo. The boy immediately put up protection in the form of his reed. Too simple, said Bill. The power of the Ice Lion's cold fang will simply freeze you. The guy continued to intimidate him. Really? The boy answered him. And he extended his wooden stick forward. Spirit of Eternal Fire, Leo exclaimed. And he rushed towards the blows of the angry guy. Your spirit has been reborn. Bill was surprised his mouth opening in horror. He didn't expect this from the boy. How could this happen? The guy couldn't calm down. His eyes lit up. This is the first time I witnessed this live, said the man, standing on the edge of the cliff. Everyone looked at the huge explosion that occurred at the battle site. Everything around was glowing with bright yellow fire. The light rays sparkled with a bright glow. I have never seen anything more strange between the fiery spirits, the guys standing nearby said to each other. It looks like this child can't be left. They continued the conversation, looking at what was happening. What kind of spirit is this? He's too strong, Bill exclaimed. He squirmed under the powerful force exerted on him. Brother Bill, don't be rash. Kill him quickly, one of the Shen family shouted, 
supporting him. Okay, he answered. First level kingdom, great physical strength, the guy continued to say. He took out a huge sharp dagger and started swinging it at the boy. Not good, Leo is in danger. This black ice sword is polished by thousands of years of cold, George exclaimed, worried about his son. The strength of the Kamai realm and the realm of physical strength have a significant difference, Lucas said, looking at their battle. Die, Leo, Bill said, and immediately took off in a high jump, approaching him with a sharp dagger. I will kill you, he continued to say as he approached the boy. Brother Bill has such good skills. The difference between the forces is enormous. Leo will definitely die, thought one of the brothers, smiling maliciously. My kingdom is higher than yours, and my movements are more precise than yours, Leo thought to himself. I'll get rid of trash like you. Bill continued to intimidate him. But the boy named Leo is not a timid one. He was always ready to fight to the end. A bursting wave, Bill exclaimed, and began to approach the guy with a new blow. Brother Leo, be careful, the sister turned to him. Your movements are very limited, the boy said in turn. He deftly dodged the attacker's powerful blow. Look, I will increase the speed of the sword strike, and now you will fall to your knees and beg for mercy, said Bill, waving his ice sword. I beg you like a dog, he exclaimed, without letting up. Yes? Leo answered him, not the least bit afraid. On the contrary, he smiled maliciously back at him. You will lose, the boy told him, now intimidating him. Bill immediately laughed out loud. You're a joker, he exclaimed. Leo in turn flew towards him, raising his index finger up. What? he asked, as if angry from his laughter. Your family has created a lot of problems for me. Now I will take revenge. Leo continued to answer him. And with two fingers, he grabbed the edge of the iron sword. Today I will teach you a lesson. He continued to speak now, not Bill. His family and brother riders were all stunned by this turn of events. The boy in flight made one deft movement with his fingers, and the enemy's ice sword immediately shattered into small fragments. I'll let you feel it fully, the boy continued. And Bill, in turn, opened his mouth in amazement. Your formation, Leo exclaimed, and now he rushed to attack the confused guy. Garbage, he finished the sentence he started. And with a powerful blow, he hit the enemy straight in the chest. Scarlet blood immediately gushed out of the guy's mouth. This is very bad, Lucas and Robert said, opening their mouths in surprise. Brother Bill, one of them exclaimed. The guy fell from a great height and was thrown back by a powerful blow from his fist. I caught you, Lucas said, holding the guy with both hands. Brother Leo, said Ayla, worried about him. The father also opened his mouth. They were very surprised at such a huge strength of the guy. He is finished. His Dantian is destroyed. Now he will only be a cripple, said one of the Lucas brothers. This child had enormous potential in physical strength and even in martial arts, Robert said through his teeth, growling. We must put him in his place. His brother supported him. Leo, you're creating a lot of problems, the brothers exclaimed and instantly rushed towards the boy. Aren't you ashamed to attack two people against one? The boy turned and asked, not understanding how anyone could be so dishonest. Shut up, Lucas answered him. He furrowed his eyebrows menacingly. If you die, no one will even know, he continued. You ruined Brother Bill's life, and now you'll get what you deserve. Robert intervened and clenched his fist, preparing to attack. Everyone is at the Ching family residence, one of them exclaimed again. And he began to get closer and closer. No despair, he exclaimed. Sir, what should we do? The subordinates of the Ching family turned to George. It can't be. It's the same, Father Leo began to say. I will protect you. George answered his guys with complete confidence. He clenched his fist, ready to go to his son's aid. Because it is too dishonest for two to attack one. Go with Leo, the father turned to Ayla. He understood that the girl was now very strong in her emerging abilities. There's no need for that, the boy answered, intervening in the conversation. He rushed forward, preparing to attack and repel the attack. I, Leo, will do everything myself, 
he reassured his family, being confident that he could cope with two strong brothers alone. It takes one day to travel from the Black Fire School to Tian Shui City. They should already be here. One can only hope, the boy thought to himself. Friend, since you're already in the city, Leo turned to someone, looking straight ahead. Show up soon, he finished. Another trick, Lucas said, grinning. Let's attack together. Die, Robert exclaimed, and rushed towards the boy with the goal of destroying him forever. Here, an explosion is heard again, and there is a bright glow of fire at the battle site. A pile of stones from the broken asphalt scattered to the sides. I never would have thought that you would find me, said a guy who suddenly appeared from somewhere. Who is this? asked the brothers, who were blown somewhere to the side by the shockwave. They were both lying on the asphalt. Well, I just felt that you were watching, Leo answered, looking at the arriving guest. It was as if he had descended from the sky. And thrusting a sharp iron sword into the concrete, he stepped on it. This is a dragon sword, said Lucas. You are the strongest student of the Blackfire School, Yan Guyun, exclaimed the second brother. And you are brave, since you started a fight on our territory. I'm sitting down with you. The guy turned to the two brothers, who looked at him with fear and trepidation. I will give you three days to get out of the city of Tian Shui, the guy who descended from the sky continued to say. Then you can't blame me for being ruthless, he continued. How dare you? Robert began to argue with him. Brother, calm down, Lucas intervened. It's just a misunderstanding, he added. We were ordered to bring our new brother to the Shen family so that he would go to the Glacier Valley. We didn't stay here for long. Lucas said, smiling. I don't care what you were ordered to do, but don't you dare touch the students of the Black Fire School. The guy answered them sternly. Students? Lucas asked in surprise. The two brothers were dumbfounded by this statement. Robert immediately contorted his angry face. What? George and Ailey asked in one voice. They couldn't understand what this guy was talking about. What's going on? Is it really Leo? The relatives began to think with their mouths open in surprise. Leo, thanks to your courage and abilities, the guy continued and turned his head to look at him. He smiled slightly. I'm sending you to the school of black fire, he told the boy. Leo smiled happily. His eyes lit up with excitement. This was a great road to the future for him. Meanwhile, Bill's father, Oscar, stood in his estate with a cup of hot tea and watched the cage suspended from the ceiling. From it came the cheerful trills of a beautiful yellow bird. Mr. Bad news, an exclamation was heard. One of Oscar's workers ran as fast as he could to him with some news. The young master is seriously injured, the worker exclaimed. Sweat ran down his face. What? the man exclaimed. This was a huge blow for him. The cup of tea instantly flew down to the floor and shattered into small fragments. Bill, why did you get hurt so badly? his father asked. The guy was brought on a stretcher and carried into the estate. The whole family immediately gathered around him. It hurts too much, the boy screamed without ceasing. Tears flowed from his eyes in pain. Who did it? I must take revenge. This is Leo from the Ching family, Florence began to shout and grabbed the guy by the chest. The young master's Dantian was destroyed by Leo. Why didn't you protect him? The woman with the heart of a snake continued to cry loudly and furiously. A pile of garbage, she exclaimed and slapped the employee who reported this on the cheek with her hand. This dog again. How dare he hurt my son. I'll tear him apart, Oscar growled. He was very angry with the guy. His eyebrows furrowed and his eyes shone with anger. You are coming with me to the Ching family. He turned to the two brothers. And then he began to take out his sharp sword. Wait, Mr. Oscar, first you must understand the situation. Lucas began to stop the angry man. And what happened? Oscar immediately asked him, turning his head in their direction. Brother Bill deserves to be the genius of Tian Shui City, but Leo uses a strange spirit of fire. The guy, frightened by what happened, began to tell the essence of the matter. Brother Bill was taken by surprise, he continued to explain. Even his third-class soul was useless against Leo. Robert joined the conversation. Why is everything like this? Were these two servants only witnesses to Bill's suffering? Oscar exclaimed in great indignation. When we were going to get rid of the Ching family, 
the strongest student of the Black Fire School was in the city, he recruited Leo, so we, Lucas continued. He was all wet from the experience. Here his speech was interrupted by a surprised Oscar. What? Black Fire School? Leo was recruited. How did they meet? The man asked many questions at once. He couldn't wait to find out all the details of what happened. What kind of school of black fire is this? Bill asked, standing up a little. After all, he had never heard of it. The Ching family truly receives the support of the black fire school. How will the Shen family stay in Tianshui City now? Asked the question, stunned and completely upset by the events taking place. Oscar, you shouldn't get too upset. Let's think about how we can solve this problem. Florence turned to the drooping man. Father, first go to your brother and heal him. And give both envoys a rest, the woman said to Oscar. And they headed to the estate. Father, the woman continued to say, pouring him hot tea. The school of black fire has arrived in Tianshui, but maybe this is for the best, she said. What do you mean? Oscar asked, looking with surprised eyes. There's truth in Leo's dirty laundry. He must have used a sneak attack to defeat his elder brother, and he was recruited by the Black Fire School, Florence explained her guess. If I had lured him, it would have attracted more attention. The woman continued to make insidious plans, until I become a student of the Black Fire School. The Ching family and the Ice River Valley should not be mentioned. Florence finished. Good idea. I'll take you to the mayor. Let him introduce you to the ambassador of the Black Fire School, Oscar answered her. He gradually began to calm down. After all, the daughter came up with a good plan, compared to nothing. At one time, you unconditionally defeated Leo in front of everyone. Let him never stand on his feet again. Surrendering his fist with all his strength, instilling confidence in what was said, the enraged man, full of anger and thirst for revenge, said, Leo's insults towards me. I will definitely return them back, the woman promised herself. They were not going to retreat, but to wait for some time, preparing a cruel plan for revenge. Leo, you don't want to study at the school of Blackfire. The father turned to the boy. Yes, his son answered him with a smile on his face. Thank you to the messenger for his kindness, but Leo still wants to be free and unbound by responsibilities. He continued to explain his point of view on this matter to his father. I am an emperor who can be my teacher in this world? Thought the boy, being very confident in himself. Interesting. Many people strive to attend the school of Blackfire, but you refused without thinking for a second, said the master, with great surprise and interest. But in the current situation of the Qing family, if you are not under the wing of Blackfire, I am worried that your family will be destroyed within three days. Have you thought about this? He asked the boy, holding three fingers forward. Of course, however, Leo began to answer him. He was quite mysterious in his reasoning. My sister stood nearby, very deep in thought about something, but her eyes were sad and serious at the same time. Our Qing family sincerely recommends a more suitable candidate for you. The boy continued his phrase and pointed at his sister. Brother Leo? Me? Ayla asked, opening her mouth in surprise. She? The master of the school of Blackfire was very surprised, looking at the girl. He also opened his mouth, looking at the cute girl. She appears to be engaged in spiritual practice. Leo, don't joke with me, said the master, winking with one eye. The charming messenger is an extraordinary master of the Yuan kingdom who has an understanding of soul and spirit. Please look at my sister's talent, the boy continued, insistently recommending that he take his sister to the school of black fire. Brother, Ayla whispered shyly. She blushed at this unexpected turn of events. And looking at Leo, she clasped her hands in front of her. Well, answered the master. He closed his eyes and began to meditate in his soul. He opened his inner spiritual strength to discern the girl's talents. A big and very strong spirit, Leo said, taking his sister's shoulders with his hands. He tried to cheer her up. It's hard to judge. Is this perfume higher than the sixth grade? The guy was very surprised. While meditating, he saw the hidden abilities and probed the girl's whole soul. With this extraordinary talent, 
I won't be lost even without Leo. This girl's admission to school is more of an achievement, the guy exclaimed, having given full approval to the boy's request. Brother Leo, what just happened? The surprised girl immediately asked him. Ayla awakened a very strong spirit. And this brother, the boy began to explain. He will take Ayla to the school of Blackfire and will supervise your training, Leo finished. The master looked at the girl with joy. But I don't want to leave the Ching family. I don't want to leave brother Leo, she told her little brother, very worried and with tears in her eyes. Your talent is completely different and we cannot waste it on ourselves, the boy explained, taking the girl by the shoulders and smiling, looking into her eyes. Yes, and when you join the Black Fire School, nothing and no one will be able to bully the Ching family, the master added, clenching his fist with joy. I'm very sad, but I must be strong. It is also important to protect my family, the girl reassured herself. This way I can help Brother Leo in the future. Brother Leo, I promise you, Isla said with tears in her eyes. It was very difficult for her to leave her family. After all, she loved her family very much and was too tender and vulnerable. Fine, the school will definitely thank me, said the satisfied master. Don't be sad. Everything is fine. Ayla should be happy, Leo reassured the girl in the meantime. I was with a messenger from the school of Black Fire. A man spoke to the master, who had arrived on the territory, next to whom stood a woman with a snake's heart. I am the mayor of Tianshui City. My name is Patrick. Welcome to our city. The man introduced himself to the master. The Tianan Empire was supported by the Black Fire School. This guy is the strongest student. I have to be careful with him, the mayor thought to himself. I have long admired the messenger I see today. You are a dragon and a phoenix among people. Patrick continued his speech. This is very annoying, Simon thought to himself. He did not like such conversations. They reeked of lies, insincerity, evil, and deceit. He really felt it. Every trip was interrupted by officials, Simon said, looking at Leo. He appeared here so quickly, it was an order from the Shen family, the boy answered him. I want to see what other tricks the Shen family sent. Leo continued and looked at the vile Florence standing near the mayor. Oh, ex-wife, do you still have the audacity to come to my house? He asked the woman, placing his hands on his hips. I want justice for my brothers. She immediately answered him. Simon, in turn, became very thoughtful. After all, the situation was not very impressive. Not very good people were trying to get into their school. Okay, you are the most talented people in Tian Shui. Don't swear in front of the envoy, Patrick said, spreading his arms to the sides, smiling maliciously. Now is not the time to argue, the woman said with an angry expression on her face and walked towards Simon, Oscar's daughter, Florence. I'm glad to meet the envoy, she introduced, turning to the guy. Mr. Simon, Miss Florence has a rare fifth-level spirit. She is the pride, the pride of Tian Shui, and I hope that she will be able to study at the School of Black Fire, the mayor of the city poured out, smiling with all his teeth. Okay, that's enough, the woman allegedly told him, embarrassed. How can I be on par with the one who attacked my brother? The woman with the heart of a snake immediately said in anger. I have long admired the messenger and finally met you, she said, clasping her hands and winking with one eye, turning to Simon. A truly heroic messenger with a good character? I am truly excited, the woman continued, brazenly looking into the guy's eyes. Very annoying, Simon also thought sadly. How he didn't like such sweet speeches, especially from a woman. She seemed to be sucking up to him. Ex-wife, do you want to study at the school of Blackfire? Leo asked her. Do the envoys from the Valley of the Poor know about this? The boy immediately continued to ask her without being confused. They just invited me. I haven't agreed yet, she replied. And immediately from this question, streams of cold sweat flowed down her face. I only want to go to the school of Blackfire, Florence exclaimed, looking at Simon. I already have a suitable candidate, the boy answered her with complete seriousness. She turned green with horror and worry that she would not be accepted into school, and waited with her snake heart freezing. However, the guy continued and looked at Ayla. You can be a sharpening stone for her, Ayla. Let's see how strong her spirit is, he whispered. I'll give you a chance to prove your strength, Simon answered without even turning to Florence. Thank you, messenger, she answered joyfully, clasping her hands. 
Then she laughed very creepily. It was disgusting on the part of her. She behaved obscenely. Now I'll show this trash, she said, and clenched her fist as hard as she could. Leo watched her from the side, crossing his arms over his chest. The difference between me and you, she exclaimed, rising in the air. Look. She can control fifth-level spirits to change the weather. This is worthy of the title of the first spirit of Tian Shui City, said the mayor of the city. Leo, accept your death, Florence exclaimed, rising higher and higher. It glowed with blue rays of bright light. What will young Ching do? Patrick thought, grimacing a little. Don't look at me, Leo said, and winked at his sister. Florence's opponent is her, the little brother turned to Isla. The little sister stood there thinking. The scum of the Ching family, the woman said. She immediately raised her hand to her lips and laughed maliciously, looking at the girl. Florence, I will finish you off for Brother Leo, Ayla exclaimed, angry. As calm as the girl was, her opposite now came out. Today I will defeat you, the girl continued. She pointed a finger at the woman, confident in herself. Are you kidding, said Florence, and laughed roughly and loudly again. Her laugh was like a horse in a stall. Leo, you are really looking for death. You allow the person who trusts you the most to die? The evil woman continued to squeal. How did you know about my relationship with Ayla? The boy asked her in response, raising his head up. Ayla, you don't know what I taught you, he said to his sister, instructing him before the fight and patted him encouragingly on the shoulder. The law of yin and yang wu yan kong, 12 impulses of the birth channel, the kingdom is the fifth level, the girl said, starting to prepare for the attack and repelling the attack. She flew into the air, continuing to meditate, preparing to attack. It shone with a bright purple light. The girl's long hair flew away as if from a blow of wind. Why is the weather turning bad again? One of the workers of the Shen family asked, looking at the sky. And the sky simply shone with a violet bright glow from Ayla's abilities. Scary! Is God angry with us? People's exclamations were heard around. Why did the bad sign appear so suddenly? We already have enough problems, Oscar said, looking at the bright night glow. The spirit of Florence is level five. It all depends on you, exclaimed the girl's father, fixing his gaze on the bright, excited sky. This is definitely a strong spirit, said Lucas. Whose is he? Robert asked in response. The brothers opened their mouths in surprise. And then from the sparkling bright sky, some sharp, shiny dagger swiftly flew down. Bright blue lightning came from him. No, it can't be. How could she become so strong in a second? I will never lose to you, the angry woman shouted in response to the girl's attack. And so Florence rushed towards her rival in the form of a huge blue bird. She moved forward with lightning speed, with the face of a beast ready to tear its victim to pieces. Ayla, in turn, embodied the new power in reality. Her huge blue eyes reflected a sharp sword. She waved her hand, pointing her index finger forward. Like a lightning strike, purple bolts were sent towards the enemy, simply tearing apart a bird flying towards its death. Scarlet blood immediately sprayed from the lips of the woman with the heart of a snake. She clenched her bloody teeth and began to growl like a wounded animal. She flew down from the girl's powerful blow and Ayla, in turn, circled above her safe and sound. Amazing! The mayor of the city whispered, looking up. This is a level seven spirit, Simon exclaimed, clutching his throat in amazement. Spirits of the Imperial Arms. The Qing family really has a hereditary spirit, Leo said, smiling contentedly. He was simply proud of his sister. This girl's future is full of frightening achievements. She will bring down the entire Tian Empire. Spirits of the seventh level are very highly valued. There are not many people with seventh level spirits, and they have achieved a lot. Even if the Shen family possesses a rare fifth level spirit, upon seeing this seventh level spirit, it becomes nothing. Simon thought to himself, Imperial weapons and merciless lightning? Yin spirits are not simple, the boy continued to think. Brother Leo, I did it, Isla exclaimed joyfully. She ran up to her brother and clenched her fists, showing her joy. You really are very strong, Leo answered her with a sincere laugh. 
You, you wounded and insulted me again, exclaimed Florence, holding the wound on her chest. Streams of scarlet blood flowed from her lips. Hey, ex-wife, do you still want to go to the school of black fire? The boy asked her, putting his hands on his hips proudly and defiantly. Leo, I won't let you leave. The embittered woman growled through her teeth. Her anger filled her rotten heart to the brim and being disgraced by her loss. She turned around and hiding her face, washing herself with tears of defeat, headed for the exit. Our family is truly blessed. Tonight we are going to a party, thank fortune, thank you Leo, and my congratulations to Ayla, said the father, proud of his children, breaking into a smile. Let's have a drink, came from the room. There really are two genius children in the Ching family. Yes, who would have thought that the Black Fire School would take Ayla as a student? In the future, the Ching family will live at the peak of Tianshui City. Yes, this is all thanks to Leo, the young master of the Ching family. I thought he was finished, but he suddenly stood up and saved the entire Ching family. His father thought to himself, being very happy for a family like his. By the way, where is Leo? Where did he go? George suddenly realized, waking up from his dreams and thoughts. He approached the table on which there was some kind of note. Father, Ayla, our family is safe now, so I can leave you in peace. The father read with great chagrin. But nevertheless, it was the choice of his smart and strong son. The city of Tianshui is too small, Leo thought meanwhile, heading forward to his new places and goals. I want to travel and explore our vast world, the boy thought as he left home. He was very freedom-loving. It was too cramped for him to be in one small city all his life. Therefore, the guy refused to enter the school of Black Fire, giving way to his very capable sister. I will be traveling with Jin Pavilion this time, don't worry. Take care of yourself. I say goodbye only for a while. His father George finished reading the message left by his son. Mr. Leo, why don't you go to the school of Black Fire and leave Tian Shui City with us? A girl looked out from one of the carriages and turned to him. Meanwhile, a line of horse-drawn carts slowly but surely moved forward. Leo rode next to them on his faithful steed. I'm used to violence and I can't stand the discipline of college, the boy answered her, smiling his wide, sincere smile. And you calmly left at midnight, this girl asked him again, opening the curtain. She smiled sweetly at the boy. Yes, because many people are persecuting me, and I have offended many. It is better for me to avoid problems. He answered her, as it really is. The technique of opening the emperor's pulse is too unusual. If I continue to train in the Qing family, I will not develop, the boy thought. Moreover, he continued his thought. Self-improvement then, or now. My way of life, I have to explore the world, Leo finally decided for himself. He was firm and unshakable in his decision. Stop! Raising his hand up, the man, all dressed up, stopped all the crews. And he slowed down his horse. There is a tea house ahead. Rest, and please be careful, said the leader of the bodyguards. Buzz. When were tea houses in such a place? This weather is good for drinking tea, exclaimed the expedition members. Leader Buzz is experienced. If they try to fool us, they won't succeed, said another crew member. A tea house in such a wilderness? Leo asked. He was clearly wary, and he slowly directed his horse towards the house. This is a man, the boy thought, noticing someone hiding to the side out of the corner of his eye. They dared to spy on the Jin Pavilion. It shouldn't be the Shen family, the boy continued to think. Meanwhile, two men were actually watching the movement of the carriage from the dense green forest. They stood aside and mockingly watched the people in the carriages. Now they've all fallen into a trap and I don't want to, said the master of poison making. Liam? Very good. There are others besides the goal, the senior killer warrior in heavy armor, Ethan, supported the conversation. Let's kill everyone, Ethan exclaimed. He smiled evilly, baring his teeth, and he fixed his gaze on the line of carriages with horses. Do not rush. Everything will definitely go smoothly, Liam answered him. He was older and wiser. However, it is also much more insidious. Let's play with them. Baring his teeth, he turned to his partner in the planned mass murder. Okay, with your abilities, they won't go anywhere, he continued, 
grinning sarcastically. Ladies and gentlemen, tea is here. The travelers tired from the road were called to the tables. The boys smiled happily because I really wanted some hot tea on the hard, tiring road. I opened this tea house for caravans and travelers. The old man with gray hair and beard began to tell the leader of the bodyguards, Buzz, all the tea and water are of good quality. And later there will be food, the old man continued to explain to him, inviting him into the room. This is a rare purple agave plant, Leo suddenly noticed, and he leaned towards the beautiful lilac flowers growing nearby. Strange plants, hidden murders. It seems I got into trouble as soon as I left the city. There will be a gentleman with the gin pavilion. Forget about it. I have to quickly remind them. Various thoughts flashed through the boy's head. He was very wary, realizing that not everything was clean and transparent here. Something is clearly wrong here. This tea has been tested. There are no problems, said the old man. How delicious this tea is. The satisfied exclamations of the crew members were heard. Take your time, the owner of the tea house told them with a wave of his hand. Drink more, said the grandfather, smiling sarcastically and somehow strangely. He rejoiced at every sip and cup of hot tea people drank. Miss, I tested it with the strength of my spirit. Please drink with confidence, Buzz addressed the girl. These bodyguards are already drunk, Leo thought as he entered the tea house. Mr. Leo, sit down and drink, the girl turned to him. She just sat down with a cup of hot tea, without taking a sip yet. This smell, the boy thought and became even more wary. His face had already changed, but no one had noticed it yet. He came closer to the table where the girl was sitting and leaned over and looked into her cup. Tea with a snake tail, he understood instantly. This is bad. This tea causes a lot of problems. The boy made the final conclusions. And the girl, in turn, slowly brought the steaming cup to her lips. Leo ran up to her and immediately grabbed the girl's hand. And the glass cup flew out of her hand, falling to the floor with a crash. The fragments scattered around. Mr. Leo! The girl exclaimed, jumping back in surprise. You can't drink this tea, he said in a serious tone, looking into her eyes. What does it mean? Is this tea poisonous? Shouts were heard around. The guys who drank this drink were very scared. Everyone opened their mouths, not understanding what was happening. I wonder if you really saw my abilities, thought the grandfather with gray hair. And he immediately directed a suspicious glance at the boy. Don't panic! Buzz raised his hand up and gave the command. Young Master Leo is too sensitive, he said, trying to calm those around him. I checked it thoroughly myself and there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. Besides, we were all drinking tea. Why is everything okay? He continued to speak with disbelief at Leo's words. You are very inattentive. Tea in itself is not dangerous, the boy began to explain to them, to convey the truth to everyone. But this tea, combined with pollen from a rare purple agave plant, will quickly become very poisonous, Leo explained to them. And then everyone looked at the floor, where the tea was spilled and the fragments of a broken cup lay scattered. Commander Buzz, you drank half a glass! The girl who was saved from the poisonous drink by the boy immediately exclaimed. That's all that the frightened head of the bodyguards could say. Interesting, grandfather exclaimed. He clapped his hands contentedly and continued his speech, already addressing Leo. At such a young age, you are already well-versed in poisons. It is not surprising that you have this skill. The girl continued to tell him, smiling maliciously. Of course, I'm an alchemist and I'm familiar with all kinds of medicines, but these are all just the basics. But the owner of the pavilion, Jin, is here. It's not good. I have to leave quickly, the boy realized. But boy, you almost ruined my grand plan. I won't let you go, exclaimed the gray-haired man, looking angrily in his direction. Thank you for drinking tea. You are late. The old man continued to mock them. Hurt. It hurts. The poisoned crew members screamed around. I beg you, Commander Buzz. Save the lady, the poisoned guards asked. Scarlet blood was already flowing from their lips. The poison penetrated and began to have a destructive effect on them long ago. Blame me for being careless. In the meantime, I can suppress the poison. Buzz began to speak. Blood flowed from his mouth just like the others. Master Leo, please help us. Protect our young lady. 
the head of the bodyguards turned to the boy for help. But, the girl began to say, Young lady, you shouldn't hesitate now, the man interrupted her. Okay, I promise. I'll take her away, the boy answered him, making a promise. He was confident in his words. Amazing, I'm glad. Survive. We will try to do everything possible to cover you. Now go. Buzz gave the command, and half dead they stood on the front line, in defense of the owner of the pavilion. Don't let anyone get away. Attack! exclaimed the gray-haired man and then his people ran up with swords in their hands to deal with the crew members. Meanwhile, an ambush awaited them on the street. Guys with bows and arrows were already waiting for them in the green thickets of bushes. They have already pulled their bow, ready to let the deadly arrows fly. Shoot! One of the archers gave the command, and many arrows flew towards the guys from the crew. There were so many of them that it seemed impossible to dodge them. One arrow hit the girl's shoulder and pierced right through it. She defended herself with her ability as best she could, and she tried to dodge the burning deadly arrows as quickly as possible. The boy Leo put his hand forward in front of the girl, protecting her with himself. The arrows broke on his fingers and scattered into pieces. Come with me, the boy said, looking into the eyes of the frightened owner of the pavilion. And taking her by the waist, he began to lift her up. Hold it! Don't let him get away! Exclamations were heard around. Meanwhile, the boy carried the girl away, holding her tightly by the waist, not letting her offend. Bandits with sabers stood below, looking in bewilderment at the flying away crew members. Here is such a sad picture. In the courtyard of the tea house, the bodies of many crew members who had already drunk tea were lying. And inside the room, the bloody battle has not yet ended. Pathetic rats, you will only walk over our corpses. Miss Olivia is very kind to everyone, and she will definitely avenge us in the future, said the head of the bodyguards, holding his wounded stomach. And the gray-haired old man, in turn, laughed, bursting into eerie, inhuman laughter. Your resistance is in vain, he said, and picked up some kind of glass ball glowing with green light. He looked inside it, closing one eye, as if trying to see something in it. Your miss is exposed to poisonous powder and explosives. She will not be able to escape, the man said angrily releasing the balls into the air. What? exclaimed the head of the bodyguards. Streams of sweat ran down his cheeks. He was very worried about the owner of the pavilion. Give up! Kill them! shouted the angry, enraged, and full of murderousness of the gray-haired grandfather. Faster! The exclamations of grandfather's guards were heard, and his well-armed people rushed into the thicket of the forest. Wait a minute, Mistress Olivia. Leo turned to the girl and he slowed down a little, lowering himself to the ground with her. Some kind of explosion sounded nearby. The green ball seemed to become big. There was some kind of stench coming from him. This is poison, exclaimed the girl. Don't breathe. Hold on, the boy asked her and covered her mouth with his hand. This poisonous powder is made from cartilage. The enemy is a smart drug manufacturer, he explained to the girl. But it's not difficult for me, the boy told her. And he tried to take him away from the caustic poisonous ball. My innate turtle breathing technique can hold him back. Wait, I'll get you out of this poisonous fog as soon as possible. He reassured the girl as best he could. He even knows the turtle's long lost technique. Olivia thought looking at the boy with a surprised look. And he's very fast, the girl also noted. They were already leaving with bated breath from the crater of poisonous fog. At least there is no need to worry about death, the girl thought. Meanwhile, he led her away along tree branches to avoid poisoning. In turn, the sounds of battle did not subside in the tea house. Sharp sabers rang throughout the entire store. The head of the bodyguards glanced at the tattoo of one of their attackers. This tattoo, you are Eric's people, he exclaimed, asking the soldiers. Even if you found out, it's already too late. They answered him, grinning sarcastically. At that time, the gray-haired old man was standing on the street near the green bowl of the forest near the green lake. I won the trophy, said the grandfather, addressing his thug, whom he hired for this massacre of crew members. Now we are waiting for the girl to return. He continued the conversation. Sir, we failed. The prey has escaped, exclaimed one of grandfather's guards. What? This is impossible, he said in response. 
the man was very surprised and very puzzled. How could one escape from his death trap? The poisonous mist you released had no effect on this guy. We tested the poison and it still works. They explained to him the essence of the matter. The information is wrong and this kid is a master, exclaimed the gray-haired man. He immediately began to sweat through the news. They really came for the young mistress, Buzz thought, lying on the cold ground. He was already completely exhausted and very wounded, besides the fact that the poison had been gradually killing him for a long time. Fortunately, Mr. Leo is truly a great man, miss. Be careful, said the brave and courageous head of the bodyguards, Buzz, and breathed his last. Liam, did you call them to run away? Asked an angry Ethan. He frowned menacingly, replaying the situation. The owner of the pavilion, Olivia Princess, uh, managed to escape. Aren't you responsible for this? The man continued to scream in a loud voice. No, don't worry, they won't run away from me, said Grandfather. He was planning something bad again, something very insidious. The girl was hit by an arrow, and this arrow was coated with my unique secret poison. No one but me can neutralize him, Grandfather exclaimed. Man is a bear, he said. The gray-haired man's warriors stood nearby. They held their swords, awaiting his order. Bring the girl who touched this cup, he asked the guy, bringing a small glass container to him. The bear man approached the vessel, and he began to sniff out the smell of this cup. He immediately closed his eyes and seemed to begin to think carefully and for a long time. And the old man and Ethan looked at him from the side with interest and great anticipation. I remember the smell, the bear man immediately exclaimed. His eyes opened wide and he bared his teeth with an evil grin. We are now temporarily safe. Mistress Olivia, are you okay? He asked the girl, leaning towards her. I'm fine. Just guard Buzz and them, the girl began to explain. And then tears flowed from her eyes. Suddenly Olivia steeled herself. Streams of scarlet blood gushed from her mouth. The arrows were sent! The boy exclaimed, I will take you deep into the Tianduan Mountains. We need to find a safe place. Now I have to neutralize the poison, he explained to the owner of the pavilion. And he rushed down from the tree, green mountain forest, hidden cave. Leo brought the girl there. Wait, he asked her, and put her at the bottom of the cave. This is an emergency. Please forgive me for being rude, he asked the girl for forgiveness in advance and opened his blouse on his chest to look at the wound. She has such delicate skin, the boy thought to himself, accidentally touching his body with his hand. The poison has leaked into the organs, which is a bit of a problem, said the boy. Mr. Leo, don't waste your energy, Olivia answered him. And she sadly lowered her gaze. This poison is strange and complex. Even in the Jinjin Jin Pavilion, there is not a single record of this poison. Even if Mr. Leo is well-informed, you are not able to solve this problem, the girl said sadly with a sad look. You won't be able to find out if you don't try it yourself, he continued to reassure the owner of the pavilion, giving hope. I ask you not to lose your life because of this poison. This poison is not something you can understand, the girl insisted. Meanwhile, Leo took out the largest needle from the needle case. Hey, don't you understand me? Leo, what are you going to do? Olivia asked looking very frightened at the sharp, huge needle. Don't worry, I'll just inject you a few times, the boy said approaching her. Don't fool me, the girl answered, stopping him. Don't be afraid, he reassured her. Just wait a little, it won't hurt, he said in a soft, gentle voice, taking her fragile hand in his. At this time, one of the gray-haired old man's warriors was climbing a high mountain slope. The bear man very deftly and quickly conquered this high mountain and was already at the very top. This smell... This is the same smell there, he said. And he turned his head in the direction from which he smelled that same smell. Leo, in turn, approached the girl, or rather her wound. And he began to do something, as if he was blowing on the wound, which already began to glow with a clear white light. The girl sighed in fear. Do you detox by mouth? She asked, blushing and embarrassed. Stupid methods like this are useful. But you will also get poisoned. Olivia said, looking at the boy with a sad look. Calm down. This poison is not dangerous for me. It's too dangerous to suck it out. Who knows? What if you need an antidote as soon as the poison comes out? The boy explained to the owner of the pavilion. 
Fortunately, my eternal flame made me invulnerable, Leo thought, smiling. You! Let's hurry up! Their goal is me, the girl said, urging the boy on. No, believe me, everything will be fine with me. The guy continued to reassure her, looking into her eyes. And then, he began to explain to the girl, untwisting the needle in his hand. He did it so skillfully and quickly that it seemed as if there were many needles, not just one. Look at this tip of my Ching needle. It can heal all diseases, the boy exclaimed joyfully with a smile on his face. He showed the girl a needle and with a sharp movement of his hand, stuck it straight into her wound. Olivia winced a little. There was a clap of lightning all around and his hand and needle glowed with purple light. A stream of yin comes from this silver needle. It can quickly spread throughout the body. Strong and strange. Leo continued to reassure her, trying to heal the girl as soon as possible. Toxins in my body are quickly suppressed. I have never heard of such a powerful and strong detoxification method, but my body feels great, she thought, closing her eyes. Leo is clearly not like the people of the Kamai kingdom. How many secrets does he hide? Olivia continued to think, lying with her eyes closed. Get up! He turned to the girl, touching her shoulder. And then she finally opened her eyes. Have I recovered yet? She asked, looking into the eyes of the guy approaching her. No, I only temporarily suppressed the poisons in your body and restored basic mobility, Leo began to explain to her. I'm still weak now. I'm so tired after acupuncture, the boy actually thought, feeling too weak. You see, I'm fine, the boy reassured her, smiling. But he was all wet and his face was too red from the heat. His face and eyes turned red and his breathing became heavy, the girl noticed, looking at him. What are you going to do? Perhaps, Olivia began to speak and then stopped. She was scared of something again. That's right, the boy exclaimed and with a sharp movement approached the girl. She screamed so hard, covering her wound with her hands, that he fell to the floor and covered his ears with his hands. I'm talking about cultivation. Why did you react this way? Did I do something wrong? He turned to the girl, sitting opposite her. Cultivation, cultivation, she wailed, as if she didn't understand what she was talking about. Of course cultivation, Olivia exclaimed, throwing up her hands. Her eyes sparkled. When you are being chased and someone is killed, you have to spend a lot of time to become stronger, the boy said, trying to explain as clearly as possible. I can't look at him. It's so awkward, she thought pressing her knees to her chest and covering her reddened face with her hands. Meanwhile, someone opened the bushes with his hands, watching the entrance to the cave. Finally, I found it, exclaimed the bear man. He gritted his teeth and roared with joy, his eyes glowing with hellish fire. They are hiding in caves, said the man. Three are coming with me. The rest take their positions according to plan, exclaimed the leader of the warriors. They were already standing in the bushes, fully armed. So boring. At a time like this, he's in the mood for cultivation. The girl was surprised, looking at Leo. He was sitting in the middle of the cave in the lotus position. What powerful chi, Olivia thought to herself. She was very surprised, watching from the side. In such a situation, was this person really able to get distracted? The girl wondered. She was more and more surprised by this unusual guy. Great! So smoothly it penetrates into the twelfth layer of the kingdom of Kamai, thought the boy, clenching his strong fist. It glowed with a blue transparent haze that enveloped his hand. It looks like the emperor's pulse opening technique is really powerful. The speed of learning in life is much higher, and again very strong, Leo concluded. Here the boy became wary. With his keen hearing, he heard someone's footsteps, is there someone here? How did they find us so quickly? The boy asked himself. He instantly rushed to Olivia sitting on the stone. Is something wrong? She asked in fear. The enemy has a skilled bloodhound. They found us, the boy exclaimed. What should we do now? She immediately asked the guy. First, come with me. He answered her and grabbed her by the waist, as if the wind carried her somewhere deep into the cave. Gotcha! said the warriors already entering the cave. They moved quite quickly, 
It seems that all the warriors are from the kingdom of great physical strength, said the girl. That's right, and the breath of that bugger is the pinnacle of the kingdom of great physical strength, Leo added, agreeing with the girl. Rats have no need to hide. I can smell you, exclaimed the bear man, and immediately laughed maliciously and maliciously. They are hiding behind a big rock. Grab them! The bear man gave the command, pointing his finger in the direction where the two were hiding. Yes, the warrior answered him and instantly rushed in that direction. If only I could fight them! But I could only kill one, said Olivia. She clenched her fist tightly and gritted her teeth. What are you saying? Don't move. Follow me a little later, Leo told her, leaving her sitting where she was. And he jumped out from behind a huge stone and in the flight of a bird rushed towards danger. I'll kill them! the boy exclaimed, encouraging himself and the girl. I just got a breakthrough effect, the guy continued. Huge, sharp needles came out of his hands. He walked them along the wall, producing a terrifying effect. He really attacked them, Olivia thought. She leaned out from behind a rock, watching the bloody battle. This is the highest skill of the Zhuan level, which was lost long ago, the Shadow Step, the girl said, opening her mouth in great surprise. Get it! the boy exclaimed, using his strongest skills. Everything around glowed and flickered with bright rays. This is very scary, the warriors shouted. They were amazed at the strength of this brave guy, and they were already lying from one powerful blow on the cold stone soil. I'm not sleeping, right? Can the kingdom of Kamai really kill the opponents of the kingdom above it? Asked a very surprised girl. Here the evil eyes of the bear man lit up with hatred and revenge. He moved closer to Leo, not afraid of him. Let's solve the problem. You are the only one left alive, the boy said, turning to the man. He managed to kill three people of the realm of great physical strength. This kid from the kingdom of Kamai is very strong, said the man. Interesting. I'm so excited. Look how your death is approaching, the evil warrior answered him. He bared his teeth which seemed to have turned into huge, sharp fangs. His eyes glowed bright orange. The bear man clenched his huge fists and, as if embodied in a huge, fearless bear, rushed forward attacking the guy. Listen, hurry up and go into that hole now. Wait for me there, he turned to Olivia, trying to protect her from danger. Feel my fist! The bear man exclaimed and attacked Leo with a powerful blow. The guy, in turn, put a block by extending his arm bent at the elbow. The man's blow hit the boy's palm. So strong and cruel. Of course, he looks like a bear, the boy thought, flying a little to the side. The difference between the kingdoms is still too great, Leo continued to reason. He skillfully dodged more and more blows from the bear man. Again and again, the man attacked the boy. Leo very bravely fought off his powerful, very strong blows. And then the boy flew up as high as possible, took off from the ground, and approaching the man warrior, dealt him a strong blow. Get it! The boy exclaimed, pouncing on him. He actually hit the bear man right on the cheek with his fist. He staggered, but did not fall. And Leo's hand glowed with purple rays, like lightning. Now! The boy exclaimed and jumped again. He clasped his hands together, preparing to strike again. And having accelerated, using all his talents and abilities, he gathered all his will into a fist, and attacked the man with a direct blow to the stomach. The bear man immediately flew back, falling on his back. He is a master of martial arts. His strength and movements are very impressive, Olivia said, coming out from behind the cover. This man has thick skin. It's difficult to cause him any harm, Leo answered her. Now there were two of them against one huge healthy man full of skills. Stop it and give it to me, the bear man exclaimed, attacking the guy again. Think about it again, Leo answered him, once again parrying the blows. You act like a hero to save a beautiful girl. If you don't stop, the warrior began to say, clenching his fist. I will kill you, he continued. His eyes burned with rage. He was like an angry, huge bear. As soon as you die, I'll get the girl, the man said menacingly, gritting his teeth. He put his powerful hand forward, which looked like a bear's paw third-class spirit. The king of the earth is the bear, he exclaimed, transforming. Die, you stinking rat. Watch how I kill you. The evil warrior did not stop. 
and he jumped up and prepared to attack. Will you kill me? You're too self-confident, the boy answered him calmly. Eternal flame? Die! Leo said in a confident tone. Now it was his turn to defend and attack. The bear man, in turn, rushed towards him and swinging his powerful healthy paw, tried to strike. But the boy deftly dodged. Iron Mountain! he exclaimed and began to attack the man, flying up to him with a blow, shining with a blue glow. Again? The bear man shouted back. Too stupid! This is pointless! The warrior continued to devalue the guy. This is to distract you, Leo said, and flashed past him like lightning. What are you doing? The man answered him. And the boy crashed with all his might into the stone wall of a huge cave. Piles of stones immediately began to fall around. Did you initially want to destroy the wall of the cave? The bear man turned to him. He began to scream wildly. No! The man exclaimed. And looking at the stones falling on him, he remained under a powerful pile of cave stones. This man's defense is very high, and he might just die because of this, Leo thought, standing in front of the rubble. But I don't need to finish him off now. It's quite problematic here, the boy continued to think, deciding what the right thing to do. And then the stones began to move. The man's hand came out of the stones with a crash, shining with a bright yellow light. I can't get out of these wrecks, said the bear man. Streams of blood flowed from his mouth. You'll see I'll destroy you as soon as I'm free, he told the boy. No, when we meet again, Leo answered him briefly and clearly. You will be a dead bear. The boy shouted to him goodbye. Wait, the man answered him, showing his fist from under the stones. Bye, the boy exclaimed, saying goodbye. And turning around, he laughed slightly, looking at the man covered in stones. Just wait, I'll kill you, the bear man said in response to him, without letting up. Sorry it took so long, Leo said, approaching Olivia. She was looking forward to it very much, and was worried about this very dangerous battle. Mr. Leo, are you okay? What happened to the enemies? She asked the boy impatiently. It's okay, I just finished. Let's go, he answered the girl. Mr. Leo, where did you get this sword? She turned to the guy again. I took it from a dead enemy, he will be useful, the boy said in response. And taking her hand, they walked forward, leaving the cave. I just felt the Ching breath outside the cave, the boy thought, remembering how it all began, before the advance of the warriors who tracked them. And so, some time later, that's it, Leo said, looking at the dead warriors. It's amazing. He chopped them up like vegetables, Olivia said, looking at the corpses. These killers are just so experienced. Who are they really? The owner of the pavilion asked the guy, seriously knitting her eyebrows. The poison in your body is suppressed only temporarily. To cure you, we need to find medicinal ingredients. But this ingredient is located in the mountains. I am afraid that I will not be able to find it, especially with the naked eye. Therefore, we can only rely on luck, Leo said to the girl. Wait, the boy exclaimed. A flock of excited birds flew above them. More ambushes, he thought. What happened? Olivia asked him worriedly. She stood hidden behind the boy. This is a treasure monkey, exclaimed the surprised girl. Quiet, Leo asked her to be silent, extending his finger forward. The treasure monkey not only hoards treasures, it is very sensitive to the spirits of heaven and earth, and it is also good at finding rare magical medicines. We're lucky. This monkey must have a medicine that removes toxins, the boy explained to Olivia the essence of what was happening. But then, for some reason, the monkey looked at them and began to run away. She babbled like a monkey. She ran away, the girl exclaimed. She wanted to follow her, but Leo immediately stopped her with his hand. Let's catch up with her. Now the guy was encouraging the girl to chase the animal. Hold on tight, he exclaimed, and immediately grabbed the owner of the pavilion, lifting her into his arms with a slight movement. Yes, the girl answered him obediently. And he rushed forward with the girl in his arms with the force of the wind. Only rays of light streamed from under his feet. Treasure monkeys are very fast monsters that many masters cannot catch. This man carries me and does not lose speed. Moreover, he can still catch a monkey, Olivia thought while the boy was carrying her. What kind of speed is this guy? The girl secretly thought while looking at him. Here, Leo stopped abruptly. In front of them stood many different monsters. 
from small to great. With paws and tails, hooves and horns, monsters block the path. This is bad, the boy exclaimed. Half dragons, half people, half bulls approached them. Let's find another way. They are wild creatures and much more terrible than human warriors, Olivia turned to the guy. No, this will create a lot of problems. He answered her completely calmly and confidently. I'm not worried. I know how to get through. Master Leo, don't joke. The girl continued to say, very worried about how it was possible to get through such a wall of monsters. And the boy ran as fast as he could with the girl in his arms. He flew past huge scary monsters like lightning. And they kept coming closer and closer, intending to close a circle, squeezing the travelers. Monsters, how dare you stand in my way? The boy exclaimed and ran even faster than the wind. I couldn't see his movements, Olivia thought while watching the guy. He effortlessly dealt with monsters. This is a top-class Schwann skill, the girl continued to think. Hold on tight, I'm accelerating, the boy said and rushed forward even faster than the wind. Can you move even faster than now? The owner of the pavilion asked him with great surprise. There, said the boy, pointing his finger to the side. The treasure is here. There really was something shining very brightly there. Yellow light emanated like rays, illuminating everything around. We finally found her, Olivia said joyfully. They both looked towards the pouring light. Be careful! Beware! Leo exclaimed. A huge mountain goat was rushing towards them from behind. The boy grabbed the girl tighter. Thank you for the support, goat. He thanked the goat. After all, he stepped right on her head, pushing off easily. They began to approach green, fluffy trees. Before the dense thicket of the forest lay some large pile of green leaves stacked one on top of the other on the mountain soil. What about the monkey? The girl asked Leo. At best, she ran away and went in search of treasures again, the guy answered her. We found her nest. The medicine should be here, the girl said, turning to the boy. She began to look for treasures, pushing apart a pile of green leaves. While raking, I suddenly came across something. Apparently, the monkey took with him what we are looking for. This doesn't make any sense, Olivia said, throwing up her hands in pity. I think I can find rare medicinal ingredients, the girl decided for herself. Mr. Leo? She turned to the guy. Meanwhile, he again began to rummage through the pile of green leaves. Leo, what are you looking for? The girl turned to him with great curiosity. And she came closer. Finally, I found it. I recognize this, the boy exclaimed. He pointed to some clay vessels, apparently filled with something. This is the best medicine. Jin Pavilion will be able to sell it for fabulous money at auction. This monkey really got him, the boy said picking up one of the clay vessels. His eyes shone with joy and curiosity. How does he know everything about this monkey? Olivia began to think again. Let's take these two clay jugs and get out of here. Leo explained to her how best to proceed. And taking two vessels in his hands, he handed one of them to the girl. It is an alcoholic drink made from medicinal ingredients. It can help improve skills and suppress poison, the girl thought, bringing the vessel closer. Once I drink this, the poison in my body can be neutralized. I'm opening the seal, the girl said, and began to open the vessel with the liquid. The haze of smell from this magical medicine spread around for several kilometers. This smell was felt even by those monsters who wanted to attack them. They began to inhale the aroma of the medicine and rush back and forth. This is bad, thought Leo. Meanwhile, Olivia enjoyed the aroma of the magical drink. Be careful, exclaimed the boy. They heard some growling everywhere. The boy immediately rushed to the edge of the mountain. He climbed to the very edge and looked down. The girl followed him. What? She said, also looking at what was down there. Why did the boy come here? And below, at the foot of the mountain where they were, monsters were already crowding. The monsters howled and growled. They wanted to climb up to get to the travelers. I want to let you all go, but you are heading straight towards your own death, so I will not hesitate. Leo exclaimed, turning to the monsters. What should we do now? The monsters have led us into a corner, Olivia said, gritting her teeth and raising her fist to her face. She was very worried and afraid. After all, there were so many of them. In turn, the boy took the vessel with the liquid and almost drained it. 
You, the girl began to say. She was surprised at what this guy was doing. I will burn every monster in the valley, said the boy. Leo already had another plan. He picked up a vessel glowing with a yellow fire. The boy threw all the strength of the bright flame down. The monsters immediately howled and growled even stronger. Someone beat menacingly with their hooves and smeared them with burning tails. Someone was floundering in the hot flames. A group of monsters. There were too many of them. Are you crazy? Olivia turned to the boy. Even a medical master can't cope with so many monsters. Leo immediately answered her. Moreover, you don't even have a decent healing stove, the girl continued. Healing plate? This is a tool of a low alchemist, the boy told her, thoughtful. A true alchemist uses heaven and earth as his furnace, the guy exclaimed. And he began to direct all the energy of the fire down towards the monsters. This monkey's alcohol will enhance my abilities and help me destroy these monsters. Leo continued to explain to her. And the monsters, in turn, were in the hot flames of a strong, burning fire. The flames burned stronger and stronger, scorching and burning everything around. It glowed yellow-red with bright tongues. Terrifying spirit of fire? What level is he? The girl asked her brave and dexterous savior, one might say a bodyguard. After all, he copes with this task much better than everyone else. I'll get rid of all the monsters, the boy exclaimed. He raised his index finger upward, as if calling on all the strength and power. Some birds circled above his head. Bright white rays emanated from the flame towards them. It's almost time. Leo said. Opened it, he said in a loud voice, and raised the blue bottle up. He stood on the very edge of the top of the rock and poured some of the contents from this blue bottle. The fire became even stronger and more fiery. Not bad! This power exceeded my expectations, said the boy, tightly holding the magic bottle that created a miracle in his hand. Oh, so you can even get rid of perfume, the girl exclaimed in great surprise. She just couldn't explain what was happening and I was shocked by the actions of this amazing guy. Even the warriors of the real Yuan kingdom were desperately looking for such miracles, Olivia exclaimed in surprise. She almost dropped her jaw, surprised to such an extent. It was simply incredible. With this, I'll definitely break through, said the boy, looking inside the small blue bottle. He was confident in his words, as well as the fact that he was now standing on top of this rock. Will you break through? Enter the realm of great physical strength? Are we really going to waste this precious miracle medicine? She asked in surprise. He really drank it, the girl thought, watching Leo already drink the magic liquid. He's very powerful, the boy exclaimed. It glowed completely blue. It was as if lightning had struck him. Mistress Olivia, please protect me for a while until I make a breakthrough, he turned to the girl. Okay, she answered. Meanwhile, the bear man began to little by little crawl out from under the stones. He gathered all his strength and the stones scattered in all directions. He scattered them with the force of an angry bear. I will destroy you, the man exclaimed. His eyes glowed with a bright red light. He immediately fell to the bottom of the cave, as if like a wild animal. He began to sniff the tracks. It looks like they are close, the bear man realized. His sense of smell has never failed. After drinking that alcohol, I finally dealt with the poison in my body. Olivia thought in turn, sitting on the edge of the cliff. However, I don't know how Leo's breakthrough is going, the girl thought, looking at him. No, didn't he say he could actually do it now? That's why he was worried about spying on us, she continued to think. Meanwhile, Leo was meditating while sitting in the lotus position. Then he suddenly screamed as if in pain and was illuminated by a fiery light. Leo, the girl exclaimed, worried about him. Even though I drank the monkey's alcoholic drink, it is still not easy for me to break through the cultivation practice in such a situation. You can handle it, Leo, he psyched himself up during meditation. Olivia leaned over him to see if he was okay. The process of leveling up is complicated, and if it is interrupted, he could get into trouble, the girl decided. Nobody should bother him. Leo, he can succeed. I will protect you, the girl said with confidence. And the boy sighed and sighed, as if he was going through pain and torment. I found you! exclaimed the bear man. He sniffed them out from the cave and saw a flash of fire that came from Leo during meditation. 
What? Isn't that so? The girl began to say. She opened her mouth in surprise and horror. Olivia stood on the edge of the cliff and looked down at the approaching bear man. What a bad time he showed up. This is bad. He found us. I won't let him interrupt Leo. I have to get rid of him. The girl firmly decided. The step of the red lotus, she exclaimed, and took a step forward, flying up like the wind. Stupid bear. I won't let you stop him, Olivia said, and rushed towards danger. Did you come to me yourself? The man turned to her. He watched as the girl descended towards him from a high cliff. Now, I won't let you leave, the man exclaimed in response and rushed towards the girl. So fast, she thought. When the bear man was already next to her, he swung at her, and Olivia screamed a little. The man hit her with the first blow. The girl fell onto the stone ground, and the bloodthirsty warrior, laughing at her, again approached to attack. Mistress Olivia, first I will tear your legs to pieces, then I will squeeze your pretty face and break all your bones. And then I'll bring you back to life again, he told her. And clenching his healthy fists, he walked towards the girl. She began to crawl back, covering herself with her hands. Feel it, exclaimed the bear man, and raised both hands up, preparing to strike. Leo, Olivia shouted, calling the boy for help. There's no point in calling him. He scared him too much to come out. The man answered her. Don't worry, he will be next, said the bear man, and laughing, began to approach the girl. Leo, I'm sorry that I dragged you into this, the girl said, and tears flowed from her eyes. Then there was a loud roar, like an explosion, and a bright light of multicolored lightning that shone around. I told you, Leo began, appearing as if out of nowhere. He stood in front of the girl, blocking her from the healthy attacking man. If we meet again, you will lose. The boy finished the phrase he started. Leo, you did it, Olivia exclaimed. She was beside herself with joy, because another moment and the bear man would have killed her. Have you broken through into the realm of great physical strength? This is impossible, the man growled and moved towards the guy. You will only destroy yourself by going against me. And now, the boy began, holding out his fiery hand in front of us. Die, he finished, and he flew at the enemy, delivering a powerful blow with his fist. A pile of stones fell around from such a powerful blow. Master Lewis, Master Lewis, bad news, exclaimed the guy, rushing into the room with all speed. Why panic? asked the man who was sitting in this room. Master Lewis, Mrs. Olivia's caravan was ambushed, the guy exclaimed, full of emotion. What? The man sitting at the table immediately asked him. He instantly got up from his chair and even broke the cup he had in his hand. What's wrong with her now? Who dared to go against my gin pavilion? The man turned to him, angry. All the guards of the caravan were dead. The main guard Buzz fought until his last breath, and the lady disappeared. He explained to Mr. Lewis, Follow me quickly. Call ten guards of the UN Kingdom and send them as quickly as possible to search for Lady Olivia. The owner gave the order to his subordinate. Look for her throughout the Tiananmen Empire and find out who is behind this. He continued to give orders, gritting his teeth angrily. Meanwhile, the bear man, slightly staggering from the boy's first blow, laughed menacingly. The methods of a hidden attack are good, but unfortunately they are not perfect, exclaimed the man, smiling sarcastically. Don't be proud of it. I just pushed you a little. Leo answered him to his impudent, malicious laugh. How dare you? I will bury you alive said the bear man, looking at him with his evil eyes. I have been in the realm of physical strength for nine years, and I can knock out 9,000 kilograms with one blow. The man continued to intimidate the boy. Even the strongest warrior of the kingdom of great physical strength of the Tiananmen Empire was not as strong as me, the bear man exclaimed and prepared for a new attack on the guy. If you leave the girl, I will let you leave. Otherwise, you will die with her, said the man, licking his lips disgustingly. If you want to fight, fight. Why talk nonsense? The boy answered him. Mr. Leo, go away. They will most likely hold me only as a hostage and will not dare to harm me. Olivia turned to the boy. I don't want to drag you into this because of myself, she explained to him, a little embarrassed and as if feeling guilty. Mistress Olivia, don't worry. He won't harm you as long as I'm here. In his opinion, we are just nobody. I think he is tired. He will definitely die. He answered her calmly. 
It so happened that I had just broken into the realm of great physical strength, and I was looking for someone who would test my combat power, the boy explained to her. So, let's begin! Leo exclaimed with confidence, and got into an attack pose. Since you want to die with this girl, I will fulfill your wish! The bear man answered him, clenching his powerful fists. I really don't know where you got so much courage from. A newbie like you dared to challenge me. Meet your death, he said menacingly. King of the Earth Bears, exclaimed the male bear. And, like a huge wild beast, prepared to attack. A red-yellow light shone around him, as if frightening with its bright flashes. It seems that he is still full of strength, and it is quite difficult to fight him. Leo said to himself, preparing for a new blow. Then I'll play with you first, the boy decided having come up with some new plan. Die! The bear man exclaimed, and flying several meters up, rushed towards him with a new blow. Come on, let me see how much energy your body can expend, Leo thought to himself. And the boy very deftly and skillfully dodged the man's powerful blow, which in turn fell onto the stone surface, breaking the stones with his fists. The boy flew back and immediately rushed towards the enemy. He in turn held his powerful fists and was ready. Coward! All you can do is run away! The boy exclaimed, and the man dodged him as best he could. Stay still, coward! Now he shouted to the boy, and Leo, as if he wanted to confuse him, very deftly dodged. It was like he was really playing with him, and the bear man was no longer so full of strength. He just continued to chuckle. This guy moves like a fly, Leo thought, sitting down on one knee on a stone. Your strength is gradually drying up. Now it's my turn. The boy noticed that the man was slightly exhausted. Don't run away, you coward, said the boy. And the man was already approaching him, preparing to attack again. The guy jumped very high above his head, so that the bear man simply did not have time to notice him. He's behind me, the man thought. Feel my fist, the big man exclaimed and swung as hard as he could. Let's see, Leo answered him and swung towards him, already preparing his fist for an attack. Their forces met, fist to fist, blow to blow. It was an amazing sight. Everything lit up around their collision. What? He really stopped a level 9 strike with a level 1 strike? Olivia said, not understanding how this was possible. My blow, are you holding it back? The bear man asked, simply not expecting this. What does it feel like to feel like your physical energy is being wasted? The boy asked him. Now it will be difficult to block this blow, he continued the conversation. And he already had a second fiery fist at the ready. You lost, the boy exclaimed, and hit him straight in the jaw with his second fist. He jumped towards the man, so that he flew back. Die, Leo said, and began to approach the bear man with lightning speed, rushing at him with a powerful kick. It hit him right in the stomach, so the man fell onto the hard, huge stones. He won, Olivia said to herself, watching what was happening. Great, this storage ring is a good thing. I'm lucky. The boy said goodbye to the bear man and picked up the ring that had flown off the man. There's so much in it! The boy continued to be surprised. The ring glowed with a golden yellow light, illuminating his hand. He defeated someone eight levels higher. This person is not so simple, the girl thought to herself, clutching her chin in surprise. I didn't think that Mr. Leo was a hidden master, Olivia told him. This thug only exhausted his own strength. It was easy for me to defeat him, the boy answered her. Mr. Leo, please take me to Lanshan Prefecture. I will give you the best reward. The girl turned to him. If I want to become stronger as soon as possible, I need a lot of valuable medicinal herbs and a food stove. This is a good opportunity. The boy has already planned. You are a thief, how dare you, came from the side. Someone's arrow flew towards him. It's not good, there's an ambush there, Leo thought pricking up his ears and eyes. He began to hear and see much sharper and better, and with one deft movement of his hand, he caught an arrow flying towards him. He did it with two fingers. We were surrounded, exclaimed the boy. And looking up, I saw a bunch of warriors hovering above them. Thief, you were able to catch my weapon, so it's not so bad. But today I brought the martial artist of the Yuan Kingdom. Even if you can fight the heavens, I will take this girl away. The man turned to him. Uncle Lewis, said Olivia. And then he clasped his hands joyfully. Don't be afraid, madam. We will save you soon. The man turned to the girl, 
Uncle Lewis, you misunderstood. He was the one who saved me. The girl immediately answered her uncle. He was very surprised, as if not knowing what to say. An error has occurred. I didn't think you were Madame Olivia's savior. Madame's assistant is our Jin Pavilion's assistant. We must salute our hero, said Lewis. You intercepted me, Leo answered him. It looks like we will have to sneak into this Lanxian prefecture to observe it a little. One man turned to another, walking behind the carriage moving in front. This failure will make them wary, stop and watch secretly. The second one answered him. This kid and Lewis, now you're in big trouble, the gray-haired man continued to say. This boy is good material. Let's see if I can use him, answered the second one. As for Lewis, sooner or later I will deal with him. He will feel my strength, he finished. Meanwhile, Lanshan Prefecture is in front of us. A huge bright building in the very center. Jin Pavilion Mansion. I have to find a way to fix the medicine faster. Leo thought to himself while sitting at a table in the courtyard of the mansion. Mr. Leo, how is your vacation going? The girl turned to him, coming closer. The wounds on my skin have already healed, he answered her. Miss Olivia, what about your wounds? The boy immediately asked her, extending his hand towards her. It's already better, thanks to the fact that young Master Leo saved me. The girl answered him, a little embarrassed. Then they raised their heads up. A large green dragon circled above them. What is this? The boy asked. Brother Nemo, the girl answered. Olivia, I heard that you got hurt. The guy turned to the owner of the pavilion, and immediately landing, he got off the dragon. Olivia, I came here to see you and brought you some potions, he said as he approached. In addition to medicinal herbs, I also took anti-aging tablets, the guy continued, taking out the boxes. Brother Nemo, did you really find them? The girl asked in surprise. Olivia asked them, how could I disappoint you? The boy answered her, stay on Mount Tiantong for a while and come back when I give the signal he commanded his huge green dragon. Even a dragon is bigger than a third-level mountain. The Nemo family is very strong. That's right, they are very strong. I heard that Nemo's family is in the Canlan region, and their strength is equal to the Glacier Valley and the Black Fire School, the guy thought to himself. Olivia, you really suffered. Don't use caravans anymore. Her brother addressed her. Thank you, brother. This really surprised me. The girl answered him, smiling sadly. Fortunately, I survived and managed to avoid trouble thanks to the help of my savior, said the girl standing next to Leo. Thank you for saving Olivia. From now on, I, Nemo, will be your friend. As long as you mention my name, no one in the Tianan Empire will dare to disturb you, the guy said, turning to Leo. I'm still confident in myself, the boy answered him with confidence, as always. Not bad, you look ambitious. I've been in your debt since you saved Olivia. If you need anything, I will do everything in my power to help you, Nemo said, smiling. It so happens that I want to make a medicine, but I don't have enough ingredients, so I want to ask Mr. Nemo about it, Leo told him in response. And he wrote some name on a piece of papyrus with an ink brush. Here, just find the ingredients from this recipe, the boy asked, holding out a piece of paper with inscriptions and handed it to the guy. This, this is an elixir worth a thousand silver coins, Lewis exclaimed when he was handed a piece of paper reading the names of the ingredients. Just fulfill his request, and I will pay the bill. This is nothing compared to saving Olivia, Nemo explained to his uncle. Thank you, Mr. Nemo. A satisfied Leo thanked him. Looking at the ingredients you have chosen, it seems that you are very experienced, the guy said. I know very little about medicines. It's just for fun, the boy answered him. What a joker. He dared to say that he could make medicine, said a guy entering the room, throwing up his hands. This freak is here again, Olivia thought in turn, looking at this guy. Mr. Brad, for what purpose did you come to the gin pavilion this time? The guy turned to the newly arrived Brad. I heard that Olivia was wounded, and I rushed here right away, he answered. It seems that you saved Olivia. People of the realm of great physical strength like you can also save others. There is no need to reward him so generously. A bottle of body-hardening pills will be enough, said the impudent guy and he began to hand the bottle of liquid to the boy. A glass flask fell in front of Leo's feet, immediately shattering into small fragments. It turns out that in your eyes, Olivia is worth low-grade pills, the boy answered him, crossing his arms over his chest. You're just trash, aren't you ashamed of your face? Brad continued to pick on the boy. 
Does he want to fight in the Jinjin Pavilion? Leo asked. And the guy flew up to him, preparing to strike. He really wanted to kill me. Fortunately, I was able to quickly block the blow, the boy thought to himself. This guy is amazing, Brad thought. By blocking the blow, the boy pushed him several meters away. Brad, you are the son of the head of the Alchemy Association. How can you do such a thing in Jinjin Jin Pavilion? If you do this again, Brother Nemo will have to teach you a lesson like last time, Olivia exclaimed very angry. Sorry, sorry, it's just a greeting. But this guy has some skills. I just wanted to ask him for advice on improving the medicine. He continued with a malicious grin. You're a specialist at the Alchemy Association. Why are you asking him for advice? The girl asked. It's okay, just let him go, Leo asked the girl, taking her by the shoulder. Mr. Nemo just promised to get you healing ingredients, and you didn't ask him for a furnace to make medicine. I wanted to ask what are you going to do? He asked the boy again. The Jin Pavilion is a high-class trading place. There are a lot of alchemical furnaces here. I can buy them myself, the boy answered him. It's not true? Do you really think that the alchemical furnace of the Jin Pavilion is some kind of iron cauldron? Can you afford to buy it? The guy continued to ask, grinning. He is my savior, so he can. The girl stood up for him. Everything is fine. I can buy my own alchemy furnace. How much does it cost? I can pay, he answered, calming Olivia, holding her shoulder. What? I can't even touch Olivia's hand, but this guy is literally touching her shoulder. Olivia really got into this trash. He should die, Brad thought, getting seriously angry. Just look at his clothes. Most likely he is from an ordinary small family. I will trample his reputation into the mud. The guy continued to reason. I think that the medicinal ingredients you asked for are good. Ordinary stoves will only spoil the medicine. With such ingredients, you should use the black turtle stove, the guy said, turning to Leo. Black turtle oven? This is an alchemical furnace with a market price of 10,000 gold coins. Everyone around immediately thought. They say that the Alchemist Association is the master of alchemy, but I didn't expect you to be a humble specialist. How can a black turtle stove be enough for such a wonderful medicine? Leo answered him, clutching his head. Hey, don't talk arrogantly here. You won't have enough money if I bring you a better stove. I'll cut off your finger, exclaimed Brad, baring his teeth angrily. If I can pay, I will cut off your finger too. Leo answered him very confidently. Hurry up and bring the white tiger stove, Brad said, issuing an order to his subordinates. And then we didn't have to wait long. Four guys carried a huge heavy stove on a stretcher, holding it on their shoulders. Stop, the boy exclaimed, stretching his hand forward. He cast a stern look at them, knitting his eyebrows. No reason, Brad said immediately, smiling again impudently and maliciously. Do not misunderstand me. I say this because the white tiger furnace is not enough. I heard that the heavenly dragon furnace is the best alchemy furnace here. If I can afford this red stove, you will have to get rid of your hands, said the boy, looking with a stern, serious gaze. My alchemy association has this red furnace, but this is the treasure of the association. In the Jinjin Jin pavilion, the price can reach 80,000 gold. Brad exclaimed, throwing up his hands. How dare this piece of trash tell me that, he continued. Bring me the furnace of the heavenly dragon. I will deprive him of his hands. He turned to his subjects. Stove of the heavenly dragon, the men said, bringing the stove even heavier and larger than the previous one. Tell me, do you want me to cut it off? Or do you want to cut off your hand yourself? Said the evil guy, baring his teeth like a hyena. And then Leo raised his hand up. A green ring sparkled on his finger. I have a hundred thousand gold, so I will be the one who will cut off your hand, the boy exclaimed, raising it high above his head so that everyone could see the expensive ring on his finger. The gold that I received from the bear man was also useful, the boy thought to himself. Impossible! Where did this garbage get a hundred thousand gold pieces? The frightened, upset guy growled, gritting his teeth. Two days later. Have you seen Mr. Leo? Olivia asked approaching the janitor who was sweeping the yard. Madam, young Master Leo hasn't left the room since last night. The man answered her. Maybe he continues to sit in the room because he insulted Mr. Brad, he asked her. 
Although Mr. Leoma is my savior, don't be so rude to him, the girl answered. I think a man named Brad doesn't want to let me go. I have to break through as quickly as possible. Leo thought in turn, meditating. I spent the whole night with the best alchemy furnace and medicinal ingredients. I will definitely get first-class products, the boy concluded, looking at his best blazing stove. Mr. Leo, it's already noon. Are you still sleeping? Olivia turned to the boy as she walked towards his room. This, the girl began to say, coming closer. She was already preparing to knock. Meanwhile, the guy continued to sit in the lotus position, meditating before his much-needed purchase. Demon monkey tablet, the boy whispered, and put a large yellow glowing tablet into his palm. He closed his eyes, sitting in the lotus position, and he put the pill in his palm into his mouth. The boy lit up like a rainbow. He was in a multicolored, beautiful glow. Some kind of strength, extraordinary power emanated from him. The guy's body not only glowed, but every part of the body had its own color, the second level of the realm of great physical strength. I feel that my body is filled with power, the boy thought to himself. Mr. Leo, you, in just a few days? Have you become stronger again? Olivia asked, opening the door to his room. This is only the second level. I still have a long way to go, he answered the girl, looking at his hand. What is this smell? My spiritual strength has increased, the boy said. Lanchen Prefecture. He felt a subtle smell coming from afar. Some kind of yellow light stretched like a haze of aroma over the houses, and birds circled around. What is this? People around said. After I inhaled this, I became stronger exclaimed one of the other people. One day, an elder told me that when a mysterious place appears, it emits a scent that increases human strength and attracts monsters, someone else said. Let's quickly go to this mysterious place, exclamations were heard around. Faster, call the others, the people on the street continued to shout. What's going on outside? Why is it so noisy? Leo asked Olivia. Wait, what's going on outside? The girl turned to the man who was running towards her. Miss Olivia, there is panic outside, caused by the news of a mysterious place on Tianduan Mountain. The boy answered her. Now everyone is preparing for Mount Tianduan. The smell of the mysterious place also attracts many monsters and beasts. I'm afraid that they will encounter monsters. It's too late. We must go there as soon as possible. The guy continued to shout. Mysterious place? This is a very rare phenomenon that has not appeared for many years. You can't miss this opportunity, the girl answered. Hurry up and tell Mr. Lewis to gather the troops of Jin Pavilion. We are going to a mysterious place, Olivia gave the command. Mr. Leo, come with us. She turned to the boy, calling him with her. It doesn't really interest me. I will train here for a while, he answered the girl, without ceasing to meditate. What a weirdo. He's not interested in the mysterious place. The girl was surprised, leaving his room. She stood in the middle of the corridor, lost in thought. Then I heard some sound. Brother Nemo? Olivia asked, and immediately ran out into the street. A huge green dragon flew over the mansion. Brad, Lanshan Prefecture has sent a signal throughout the mainland. The main force will arrive soon. So, you lead the people of Jin Pavilion as soon as possible. Let's go to a mysterious place together, he suggested to the guy. I can't let people take advantage of this opportunity. The Alchemy Association is also gathering an army, the boy said in response. Listen to me. The one who brings the treasure from the mysterious place will be generously rewarded, Brad said, addressing his people. Prepare my horse quickly, he exclaimed, giving an order to his subject. And from around the corner, two men were already watching them. What a coincidence. A mysterious place has appeared here. Maybe we should postpone the task and rob him first? The gray-haired old man asked his partner. Great, then we'll kill everyone who gets in our way. The second one answered him. School of Black Fire! This is a special message! exclaimed a man standing on the school grounds. And behind him, some sharp small dagger with a note stuck into the asphalt. What is written there? asked the leader, sitting on a high throne. According to a message from Lanshan Prefecture, a mysterious place has appeared on Mount Tianduan. The guy who brought the note answered him. Mysterious place? There must be rare treasures there. Simon thought upon hearing such news and immediately went to the teacher. Teacher, 
I ask permission to go to Tianduan Mountain with Ernest to explore it. He turned to the gray-haired man. No, Ernest will not go with you. Lead the rest, the teacher answered him. Master, this is a great opportunity to test Ernest's fortitude. And Tianduan Mountain is located in the Tian Empire, which is Ernest's homeland. This will make it easier, the boy wanted to continue. But the teacher cut him off mid-sentence. Simon, there have recently been reports of several people being killed in the Black Dragon area. Now we must protect Ernest well, the teacher answered him. I understand, I'll leave you right now, said Simon, obeying his wise gray-haired teacher. Meanwhile, Tianduan Mountain, there the aroma spread throughout the entire area. Were these monsters attracted by the smell of a mysterious place? One person asked another, fighting off the terrible monsters on the way to the mountain. One of the monsters dealt a fatal blow to a man who tried to defend himself from them, but it didn't work. He spoke only about low-level monsters, but here there are high-level monsters, the guy said, repelling the attack of other monsters. He took a stance, trying to defend himself, but he was not prepared for such a huge gathering of monsters. It will be very difficult to get there, the guy exclaimed. He clenched his fists tightly, very angry. It seems that the main forces have reached Tianduan Mountain, Leo thought meanwhile, continuing to meditate. The monsters on Mount Tianduan were also attracted by the smell, the boy realized. He began to feel everything much more strongly. This time I'll stay, he decided. Apparently, he was not interested in this trip to the mountain, unlike everyone else, because many monsters have gone to a mysterious place. Now is the best place to look for medicinal ingredients. The boy opened the doors wide, and went out into the yard. Now that the monsters have gathered on Tianduan Mountain, the unusual medicinal ingredients that the monsters guarded are left without protection. The guy continued to think, is Mr. Leo really leaving empty-handed and without a weapon? One of the employees on the estate asked him when he met him in the yard. I'm just going to the mountains to collect medicinal ingredients. Why do I need a weapon? The boy answered him with a question, collect medicinal ingredients? Are you going to do this now? Sir, now that everyone has gone to a mysterious place for treasure, why are you going for medicinal ingredients instead? The employees asked him with great surprise. At my current level, it is impossible to fight so many monsters gathered on Mount Tianduan, so I didn't join them, the boy thought to himself, especially with this guy named Brad. I have to stop him. Now I have to become stronger, Leo finally decided. This is my chance, he whispered as he headed into the forest. Hurry up! We can do it! Let's hurry to a mysterious place. That's all we heard around us. You guys go to a mysterious place and I'll find good medicinal ingredients for myself. The boy exclaimed with a satisfied smile on his lips. And here in front of us is the Tianduan Valley. All the monsters went to a mysterious place. It's much easier this way, Leo thought, standing in front of a tall blue waterfall. A leaf of a fire dragon, I'll take it, the boy decided, leaning towards the blossoming green branch. You can also take the heavenly fruit, said the guy, walking through the green clearing alone. No one was bothering him at the moment. Which one should I take? I don't have any room in my bag anymore. The boy exclaimed, looking at the two fruits in his hands. His eyes widened in front of such a huge choice. There are so many ingredients here that I can barely carry them, thought Leo. On his shoulder was already a full bag with different plants. If you don't resist, then maybe we'll let you go. He heard a voice behind him. Who are you? The boy asked. A group of armed men was approaching him. It doesn't matter who we are. You weren't given permission to chat. The man with a knife in his hand answered him. Everyone who brings the treasure will be rewarded, answered the second robber. This is not the place for those who are afraid to fight monsters and beasts, exclaimed the third. Are you trying to rob me? Leo asked them in response. And he smiled sweetly, showing that he was not at all afraid of them. Then the chaos began. The guy caused an explosion there. Smoke, things flying. Let's quickly run to the boss. You dared to attack the glacial valley? Just wait, they shouted as they ran away. The guy left them only wearing underpants. Sister Bethany said that the mysterious place of Tianduan Mountain has attracted many masters. Do you have any strategies to capture it? A voice came from a passing cart. As far as I know, the Nemo family, Jin Pavilion, Alchemy Association, and Black Fire School have already sent their people there. 
The Jiayu clan has many factions. The guy sitting in the card answered the woman. The brothers who come with us will definitely put them in their place. We can handle large groups too, she continued. Brother, we were robbed, was heard near the carriage. What? asked the guy sitting next to the woman in the covered wagon. Who is this brave guy? Who dared to rob the glacial valley? The guy exclaimed, opening the curtain. We don't have extra hands yet. Now only the mysterious place is important, said the woman, hidden under a hat with a veil. First, go and get dressed. If you recognize the robber, then tell me and I will get rid of him. The guy from the cart said in a loud voice, addressing his half-naked warriors. Thank you, brother, thank you. The frightened guys answered him, near the entrance to a mysterious place. Everything there glowed with a violet bright light. The reflections of the rays illuminated the nature around. But not far from this place, people fought with monsters. A man named Lewis killed evil monsters one after another, sticking a knife in the heart of another monster. It's been a bloody battle and we can finally go in! But I feel that the smell is disappearing, Lewis exclaimed. A loud, eerie roar was heard from the edge of a high stone. On it stood another monster in the form of a four-legged huge beast. Birds began to circle over this mysterious place, flying away from there. What else is this? Why are the monsters running away? The warriors did not understand. It looks like the scent has dissipated and the monsters are returning to their place. Away! Nemo exclaimed. They began to run away in all directions. Some climbed up the rocks, others simply jumped over the heads of the monsters, and others fell under the hooves of the monsters without having time to escape. Good thing I'm climbing fast! By the way, all the monsters have fled. Won't it be easier to enter the mysterious place now? The guy thought as he climbed a tall tree. I don't care about the Nemo family or the Jin Pavilion, the boy said. I will be the first, the boy continued to think. It was as if some kind of portal had opened in front of him. It glowed with a bright purple light, but it was not visible what was behind it. I'm taking advantage of this opportunity. Mysterious place, I'm on my way, exclaimed the boy, rushing forward. Well, no, Nemo's family is first, Nemo said, blocking his path. And he held out a huge sharp saber in front of him. Then some bird rushed towards him and knocked him down a little with its wings. Who did this? The boy exclaimed, not understanding what was happening. Funny. So many people tried to enter this place, fighting monsters. So why was Nemo the first? A man who got out of the carriage addressed the guy, and then he glanced to the side. Some sharp, fiery object was flying towards them. But it certainly won't be you. Simon, a student of Black Fire, interrupted the entire conversation. Stop the fight, they shouted around. I think this won't be of much use, Lewis said, looking in their direction. Meanwhile, Olivia had already approached the purple portal. She reached out her hand as if trying to touch him. Master, I just examined it. It turns out that the mysterious place repels even the true warriors of the Yuan Kingdom, Lewis said. What are you talking about? Nemo asked him, not understanding what his uncle meant. The closer we are to the entrance, the weaker the smell. So the monsters ran away, said the man. But the mysterious place did not push me away and the aroma appeared when I approached, Olivia answered. Could it be that only people from the realm of great physical strength can enter this place? Asked the veiled woman. Dragon cave! This place smells like treasures! Leo thought in turn, entering the cave. This place simply smells of treasures, the boy exclaimed, approaching some incredible plants. Great stuff! It will be a pity if I leave them, he thought. And of course he took these plants, putting them in a bag. What? Asked the boy as if he heard some strange sound behind him. Why did the monster come back right now? The boy thought, and squatting down, turned his head to the side. The huge, strong monster clenched his fist with all his might and hit the stone on which Leo was sitting. It's good that he managed to jump away in time. Otherwise, all that would have been left of him would have been a cake. This monster is the third level, thought the boy and took his full bag and ran away. I only took two fruits, the guy exclaimed running away with all his strength and speed. Great! There are people there! Leo thought, and rushed towards the crowd of people. His heels were already sparkling. But the boy did not leave the bag with the loot. Even if only people of the realm of great physical strength can pass, it must be the Alchemy Association. 
Brad shouted at the top of his lungs. No. This must be a glacial valley, the guy from the valley answered him. Why is the earth shaking? Nemo asked. Excuse me, could you help me? Leo, who was running as fast as he could, asked them, smiling. With what exactly? What the hell? said Simon. They all immediately raised their heads looking at the running guy. God, isn't this Leo? The surprised girl said when she saw the guy with a bag on his shoulder. Behind him is the giant monkey of the dragon cave, Brad exclaimed. He was completely sweating after seeing this huge, creepy monster. The fangs of the huge monkey were simply terrible. They sparkled like sabers in his open mouth. And the eyes glowed with the red, hellish flame of anger and rage. This guy brought a third-level monster, Lewis said. Everyone instantly became wary, opening their surprised mouths. Hi! What a coincidence! Everyone is assembled! He exclaimed, waving his hand at them. With a big smile on his face and streams of sweat. This guy has brought a giant monkey of the third level with him! Everyone around began to shout. They looked at the monster with fear. Sorry, I didn't mean to, he said guiltily. And the monster kept chasing, through the people standing in its way, chasing the boy. Garbage, which was only too good to run away, brought the monster. You just created problems, Brad shouted in his direction. I'm so angry at him. This time I will definitely kill him. No one will stop me, the guy thought, gritting his teeth. You brought the monster here on purpose to prevent us from entering the mysterious place, Brad exclaimed and rushed towards the guy. He jumped so that stones scattered around. And Leo managed to jump to the side with lightning speed. You will die right here and now, you pathetic scum, said Brad, again trying to attack the boy. He is quite persistent. He wants me dead, Leo thought to himself, deftly dodging his fiery blows. Brad, stop, Olivia exclaimed, approaching them. She rushed to help the boy. Wait! The guy from the ice valley stopped her with his hand. Our glacier valley does not care about such things. I advise Jinjin Jin Pavilion not to pay attention to such trifles. Our warriors cannot interfere in such minor skirmishes, he said, addressing the girl. What did you say? He asked Leo, hearing something said in his direction. The glacier valley is just a bunch of garbage, said the boy, not afraid of a retaliatory strike. Better take care of yourself. Die! Brad continued to attack the boy in turn, and he attacked him with a new blow. However, his power hit the ground and he missed again. And Leo dodged very cleverly, and taking one of the found magic fruits in his hand, he threw it in his direction. Catch it! The boy exclaimed. And the round ball of fire flew at full speed towards Brad, who was rushing towards him. What is this? He exclaimed. And this ball was already approaching his face. The guy grimaced, not understanding what was flying at him. Young master, don't worry. It's just dragon fruit pulp that prolongs life, Leo answered him. Were you so worried about me that you decided to add poison to it? Brad asked in response. Drops of mush were running down his face. No, 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 I just threw a piece of fruit at you. Sorry, I forgot to say that the giant monkey came because of him, he added with a satisfied grin. Fresh dragon fruit is so fragrant that the monkey will definitely smell it, Leo added after catching up. And the huge, hairy monster was already approaching the guy from behind, having smelled the smell of his fruit. I'm not done with you yet, he exclaimed in response. His eyes shone with fear. Streams of sweat ran down my face. And the monster has already gone on the attack. A powerful explosion was heard from the strong impact. Orange fire, smoke, bright burning flame. Leo, just wait, Brad shouted, running as fast as he could from the monster. His face was already painted with the bright blows of the monster. Young Master Brad, thank you, but I don't need you. You took away the giant monkey, now we're even, the boy said contentedly. I'll come back for you, the guy screamed, running away. Since you're done with Brad, you're now ours. Return everything that you took from the glacial valley. A guy from that very valley addressed him. What do you want? Leo asked him, as if not understanding what this guy is even talking about. I confessed, weren't you the one who robbed and beat my people? I can force them to identify you, the guy explained to him, crossing his arms over his chest. I think they were wrong. At first they wanted to rob me, but it turned out the other way around. Leo answered him with a sweet smile. What? 
A teenager beat up a group of people in Glacier Valley? Simon said, scratching his chin with his hand. He smiled sarcastically. Leo is definitely not that simple, Olivia thought to herself, looking at the boy. So the Glacial Valley is just a gang of robbers, Leo said, standing opposite their leader. If you kneel down, clarify everything and apologize. The Glacial Valley will generously forgive you. The guy growled, clenching his teeth, turning to him in response. Apologize? Should I make it clear that you are robbers? The boy continued to argue with him. So you have decided to die. You yourself forced me, exclaimed the leader of the Ice Valley, and immediately took an attack stance. It was completely illuminated with blue cold fire. David! Simon turned to him, putting his hand on his shoulder, as if stopping him. This only applies to the glacial valley in this boy. Don't stick your nose into something that's not your own business, the guy said, turning his head slightly towards him. This is not the case. Leo's sister is the treasure of the Black Fire School, so Leo's affairs are definitely my business. I can't just watch, Simon exclaimed in response, preparing to attack. What? Is the school of Black Fire challenging the Glacial Valley to a bloody battle? A surprised David asked him in response. Why should I kill you? Even so, a strong warrior cannot scare weaklings without losing face, the boy said calmly. What do you mean? David asked him. He was very angry. The guy gritting his teeth was beside himself with rage. I mean, you, a person from the UN realm, are bullying a boy from the realm of great physical strength. The Glacial Valley has no dignity left at all? Simon continued to explain to him. You must fight an enemy of your level, he said, trying to get through to the guy. And Leo, in turn, watched their argument from the sidelines, being grateful to Simon for standing up for him. At this time, a woman with a veil on her face climbed down from the carriage, going out into the street. You are full of determination, she said, lowering her head slightly. And she headed towards the boy with a big bag on his back. I recently learned the truth from Glacier Valley. Even though your sister is strong, I know about your level, the woman said, turning to the boy. Leo, you embarrassed me in front of the Shen family. You will pay for this with your life, exclaimed the evil woman, removing the veil from her face. Leo, I too come from the realm of great physical strength. Fight me, said the woman with the heart of a snake and rushed to the offensive. Leo, open your eyes, she said, turning to the boy. After all, he seemed to have fallen asleep without noticing her appearance. You, the boy exclaimed. He didn't expect to see anyone here but his ex-wife. You will die here, she threatened to kill the guy. The woman rushed at him using her icy blue power. She threw an ice ball in his direction. But the boy immediately jumped up, dodging the blow. He found himself as if inside a tornado and shrank into a ball so that it would not hit him. An icy stream of power flew towards him. But the boy instantly repulsed the blow with his strongest defense. It was quite dangerous, said the boy. But he crushed this blow. The blue rays seemed to split into many small fragments. It seems that deceit and fraud are an integral part of the Shen family's traditions. Do you always hit me in the back? Leo asked her. I don't care about that as long as I can kill you, exclaimed the angry woman with the heart of a snake. Thanks to the power of the realm of great physical strength, even if you are able to pierce the heavens, you will never defeat a level 5 spirit. Florence continued to intimidate him. Not to mention, she began to say, climbing up as if on steps. To my phoenix who revealed his potential in the glacial valley, this time, I was able to rid myself of that shame, she continued. And then everything began to spin again in a bright blue light. She rose up to strike again, and the boy fought back with his palms as best he could, very cleverly and skillfully breaking her power. I wonder how long you can run away, Florence asked him, again directing streams of power at him. Having risen even higher, she accelerated and waved her hand as hard as she could, spreading blue rays. The boy, in turn, continued to dodge her blows, as if playing hide-and-seek with her. Glacier Valley has such a strong spirit. This guy is in danger, said those gathered around. He dodges so cleverly. I will aim at the legs, decided the woman with the heart of a snake. Leo, I'll kill you, she exclaimed, attacking the guy again. What? the boy asked and again tried to dodge the blow. But still, she hit him in the leg. Leo, the day of your death has finally come, Florence said, contentedly clenching her fist. She laughed maliciously, 
but then a cloud of thick smoke appeared in front of her. There was nothing visible ahead. A complete smoke screen. Why is there so much smoke? The woman asked in surprise. She couldn't understand what happened. Because of him, you can't see anything! She growled in surprise. The smoke screen completely blocked her view. I'm not dead, the boy exclaimed, and his hand appeared from a large, thick cloud. She looked at this with great surprise. Try my fist, the boy said, and rushed towards her with a powerful blow. No, Florence immediately screamed, not having time to defend herself from the enemy. And Leo, in turn, was already approaching her evil face. It hit her straight in the face, and the woman flew down. She hit the ground, falling from a great height. My legs went up from the hard fall. Leo, you deceived me again? Florence whispered, sitting on the ground and holding her beaten face, burning from a strong, powerful blow from the boy. I will avenge you, David exclaimed. And he picked up his ice ball of power. As I thought, this blow was enough, Leo thought, looking at the woman he had crushed. He has no family, Olivia said, looking at David, which in turn was already directing all its strength against the boy. Hold him. Kill this bastard. Armed warriors shouted around. I wasn't going to enter the mysterious place, but I have to, the boy thought and moved in that direction. He rushed as fast as he could towards the bright purple glow emanating from the portal. Now I'll definitely hit it, David exclaimed. And this time he aimed two whole ice balls at the boy. Leo, watch out, Olivia exclaimed. She was very scared for him because she saw how the man wanted to attack him. And the boy, in turn, made a flip, flew up, and turned over and began to approach the portal. At the same time, the blue ball had already reached the portal, but he didn't have time to hit him. It seems people from other kingdoms cannot enter here. Your attacks are also useless, the boy realized, smiling boldly. Bye, everyone, Leo said, waving his hand. I'm going to a mysterious place, he shouted goodbye. Olivia smiled contentedly, looking at what was happening. We can't let this shameless escape Call for reinforcements from the Glacial Valley? We're going after him, David exclaimed, clenching his fist. Mr. Lewis, I'll go first. Summon the people of the Kingdom of Great Physical Strength of the Jinn Pavilion. Olivia turned to the man. Remember, you must call Namoro, the girl said, turning around. The School of Blackfire cannot stand aside. We are also coming with you, said Simon, assuring the girl of his support. All organizations want to enter the mysterious place because they might get treasures that have never been seen before. We shouldn't fight for the right to enter, Lewis said. We need to join forces to get rid of the smell of this place and save those who entered from fighting monsters. We'll divide the treasures upon arrival, Nemo suggested. Exactly, the soldiers supported him. Somewhere in the Tianduan Mountains, it was beautiful green and warm all around. The rays of the sun pierced the thick crowns of trees, and the birds circled and sang songs. Jerry, 18 members of your family have 180 years of martial arts experience. Dan addressed the guy. Second prince, my family is already inside, the boy answered him, greeting him. I think my family can even catch the master of the UN kingdom. Now this land is full of strong warriors, the guy continued. We will definitely be able to destroy all the people of the kingdom of great physical strength, the boy assured Dan. Then the second prince will be able to use the place to take the throne, the guy exclaimed. Good job, Jerry, the guy praised him, laughing sincerely and kindly. When this happens, I and Lincoln will make your Ching family the main one in the empire, he promised the boy. Everything will belong to me, Jerry exclaimed, standing on the top of a huge high rock. He spread his arms to the sides, confident in his words. The Qing family in the capital of the empire will go through fire and water for the sake of the second prince, Dan answered him. By the way, I heard that the genius of the Qing family lives in the city of Tianshui. He continued the conversation with this guy. The Qing family living in Tianshui is just one of the subsidiary branches. Surely that genius is only slightly better than garbage, Dan answered him. Too self-confident was heard nearby. The Qing family of Tianshui where our young genius is from, will not tolerate this nonsense, said Robin from Xuanhuo School. You weren't afraid to address me like that. Do you want to die? Dan answered him, clenching his fist. You dare to disparage my uncle's hometown? Look, Robin continued, taking out some kind of map glowing with yellow fire. 
Is this a fire talisman that can destroy even the master of the Yuan Kingdom? Dan thought. He was already sweating from fear. Wait, this guy sneaked up on me with the prince and went unnoticed, Dan said. It's you, Brother Robin. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Jerry addressed him. Brother Robin was my mentor whom I met while studying at Xuanhuo School, the boy explained to Dan. Brother Robin, I didn't expect you to take such precious fire talismans with you. Come with us to a mysterious place, he suggested to the guy. The young master specifically gave me so many fire talismans. He told me to help Leo at the meeting, Robin exclaimed, telling him about his secret plans. Leo? They asked in surprise. This is how this guy gave out all his cards. I didn't feel much difference inside the mysterious place, he thought, walking as if in another dimension. Leo, wait, where is your bag of medicinal ingredients? Olivia called out to him. I put it in storage when I came here, the boy answered her. Why did you come in? The guy asked her, very surprised. I am the owner of the Jin Pavilion. While I'm with you, people from the Glacial Valley will not dare to touch you, she explained to the guy. Nothing. You should have asked me. The boy continued to be indignant. Suddenly, you are very slow-witted. The girl answered him smiling. Okay, what do you want? He turned to Olivia and crossing his arms over his chest, he looked at her with some suspicion. What did you want to do in the mysterious place? The girl answered the question with a question. I smelled this hundred moment. It is the aroma of heavenly soul grass. This is an extremely rare medicinal ingredient and a treasure, he explained to the girl. Is there grass of the heavenly soul here? Olivia asked him in surprise. Help me get it, the girl asked him. She smiled sweetly, expecting a positive answer. No, Leo answered her. He was firm in his decision, and somehow he looked at the girl too seriously. Why not? Olivia said in surprise. You also realize that it was the scent of heavenly soul grass, but I can't give it to you because I need it, he said in response to her. Even if you eat the heavenly soul grass, you will not be able to awaken the soul. Not all people can awaken their souls with the grass of the heavenly soul, the boy continued to explain to her. So you really know. The girl exclaimed in surprise, opening her big, beautiful eyes. You just don't know who I am, he told the girl, mysteriously closing his eyes. In fact, I have grown, Olivia said, and she seemed a little sad. Stop! I'm not interested in your childhood if that's all I'm leaving, he told the girl somehow callously and dryly. This is it, Leo began to say. And then he stopped abruptly. He looked forward in front of him. Some giant man-eating plant wanted to attack them. He had a throat and many huge sharp teeth around. This snake plant was simply gigantic in size. The boy immediately stood up. He was ready to defend himself. But the appearance of this monster was quite unexpected. Mistress Olivia, please step back, he exclaimed. To protect the girl from a formidable monster, the monster tried to attack, but Leo jumped back with lightning speed, jumping as high as possible. The blow hit the stone. It shattered with a roar, scattering around. Leo, be careful, the girl said, worried about him. Don't worry, just hide, the boy answered her, turning his head towards the girl. He even managed to smile in such danger. The guy clenched his strong, strong fist and flying even higher in the air, was about to strike. He was all in a blue transparent light. Blue, explosive, the boy exclaimed and all lit up blue. His hand seemed to be wrapped in a strong blue spring. Fist, Leo said, and rushed with a blow straight to the target. The monster was already lit up with blue bright rays. His hands seemed to become much larger. There were enough of them for the entire body of a huge vile monster. There were already bright sparks and lightning flickered all around. The boy had already started to go down. Many small pieces fell from above, simultaneously with his flight to the ground. Blue explosive fist? Olivia asked and she covered her mouth with her hand in surprise. Leo, in turn, had already landed, and the pieces falling from above were the remains of a monster torn into pieces. One explosive fist is a martial arts punch, only a fragment of which is located in the Jinjin Jin Pavilion. Does he really know him? The girl thought with even greater surprise. Oh, there's a spiritual stone here, the boy exclaimed. In the clearing where the pieces from the body of the monster plant fell, there really was a beautiful purple stone. Every time he becomes more and more mysterious. This spiritual stone is quite good. I can make excellent medicine from it. 
the guy said, looking at this magic crystal. You are safe! Your teacher taught you the long-forgotten blow, blue explosive fist, Olivia said, turning to Leo. Okay. The boy laughed in response. This, the boy began to say. He was thinking about something. There was a haze of some bright aroma all around. Grass of the heavenly soul! He finished the phrase he started. After all, the scent trail was very rich and pronounced. Hurry! The aroma comes from there! The boy exclaimed. And, taking the girl by the hand, he rushed in the direction where the smell came from. It's strange why I don't feel it, Olivia asked, and became a little sad. Of course, you don't feel the aroma. This is a gift from my rebirth, the boy thought, and immediately remembered how it all happened to him. This, Leo started again. A bunch of monsters crowded next to the streams of aroma. They were already right there. The aroma comes from here. I didn't expect it to attract so many monsters, the boy exclaimed. They stood behind the monsters, watching. The monsters were completely enveloped by a trail of scent. She seemed to be visible in the yellow sunlight. And against the bright background of the aroma, there are huge figures of monsters. Is this the grass of the heavenly soul? The girl said, turning to Leo. She covered her mouth with her hand in great surprise. I won't stand on ceremony with these monsters for long, the boy said and prepared to attack. He was already in a fighting stance. Watch how I deal with them, the guy exclaimed and immediately flew into the air. He prepared to attack a whole bunch of evil monsters. What? Although the monsters here are only low level, is he really going to fight everyone? Olivia thought, worried about him. And then the first blow came. He hit the monster right in the face with all his might. Only lightning and yellow rays of light flew around him. He scattered the vile monsters very deftly and skillfully. I'm done, the boy exclaimed. He rose as high as possible and with a powerful jump defeated a couple more monsters. They scattered in different directions like balls, pillars of fire and dust. Clouds of smoke enveloped everything around. Are you really finished yet? Olivia asked him covering her mouth with her hand. She was extremely surprised. Leo was already standing in the thick smoke, having defeated a whole lot of monsters single-handedly. Yes, that's right, the boy answered her. And then he winked at the girl with a sweet smile. But then he pricked up his ears again. Something was heard behind him. There was a noise, as if something was approaching them. What? said the boy. He saw someone's dark, full-length figure. He is very fast! thought the boy. A sharp, shiny dagger flew in front of his face, almost touching him. A man flew up to him as if looking at him. He looked at him with an eerie gaze that emitted a bright crimson light. Who are you? He asked the man with a question. Olivia stood nearby, anxiety and worry clearly reflected on her face. The man loosened his grip a little. He moved slowly and held the weapon point down. Above him was like a crimson shadow with a sword in his hand. As he came closer, the boy noticed the emptiness in his eyes. Everything was just black there, like death. This is the shadow of the third level with the sword of a horned dragon, said the boy. And I was very wary. The shadow began to approach them closer and closer. He picked up the sword, which was completely in a crimson glow. It seems that he has become stronger because of the aroma of the heavenly soul grass, Leo concluded, scanning the approaching human monster. He immediately placed a block in front of the sharp, sparkling sword that rose above him. The boy had a strong block even from a blow with a cold weapon, but he doesn't know how to wield a sword. He just swings it, the guy realized, observing his technique of using the weapon. His soul only became stronger because of the heavenly soul grass. He's just a puppet, the boy reassured himself, blocking the blows. Leo, I will help you, Olivia exclaimed. She wanted to help the boy in some way, Moreover, the shadow was very strong. Rain of light blades, said the girl. And she directed her power towards danger. Many daggers flew towards the monster, but with his strength, he blocked all the weapons flying in his direction. Hurry up and hide, said the boy. He looked at the girl with concern. I can only use this, Leo said, and rushed towards the monster. He clenched his strong fist and all illuminated by the rays, rushed forward to the danger. He rushed at the monster, sticking out his knee, and he hit them right in the head. It was a very strong, powerful blow. The monster flew many meters back, leaving a yellow trail of bright light. Good job, Olivia exclaimed, 
clenching her fist happily. She smiled, already sincerely rejoicing at the victory. Wait, said the boy. Apparently that's not all. He sharpened his hearing and sharp eyes. The warrior you just defeated is drawing corpse gas towards him, he explained to the girl, looking at the prostrate monster. It was as if he was attracting all the dead souls to himself. It was something very bad. Strange. Is he resurrected? The guy asked, opening his big eyes wide. Indeed, the monster seemed to have risen from the dead. He stretched out to his full height and took out his hooked, sharp sword. He pointed the tip straight at Olivia. The girl remained standing motionless. She froze like a silent statue. Be careful, exclaimed the boy. And he immediately rushed to her aid, blocking the sword strike with his hand. Eternal flame, Leo said his cherished phrase and prepared to repel blows and attack with stronger fervor and the use of abilities. He boldly blocked the blow with the sword, catching the blade in his fingers. He stopped the sharp weapon with just two fingers. With his other hand, he held what looked like a blue fire. His hand glowed as if with cold fire. He directed this fire directly at the warrior. He was completely engulfed in blue flames. But he didn't make a single sound, as if he was mute. And he just stood silently and looked at the boy. Then it seemed to turn black, covered with some kind of bark. And many bright blue lightning bolts from Leo's blows ran through his weakened body. Leo, are you okay? Olivia asked, rushing to him. I'm fine. It will take time for him to rise again. We must hurry up and pick up the grass of the heavenly soul, he reassured the girl. And so they approached a flaming crimson plant. A fragrant, bright aroma emanated from him. The boy reached out with his hand to the growing grass and was about to pick it. But then he screamed. He was really in pain. There was a mark on his arm as if from a burn. The boy was thrown back by some powerful force. She has a very great destructive power. Did that puppet absorb it? The boy wondered. Leo, did this grass hurt you? The girl asked him, looking at his burnt palm. That's what I thought. This is not the grass of the heavenly soul. This, the boy began to say. His eyes lit up. Soul grass, he exclaimed. He saw many rebel souls wandering around this unusual plant. This is a phenomenon that destroys everything. I remember it from my past life. How could she appear here? The boy continued to think. I'm coming, Leo said and took Olivia's hand. He squeezed his hand a little while addressing the girl. Wait here a little, he told her. And then he headed somewhere. You defeated that warrior. Why not go for the heavenly soul grass? The girl asked him. This is not the grass of a heavenly soul at all. It's the grass of a dead man's soul, he began to explain to the girl, turning his head towards her. As long as the dead man's soul grass is emitting a scent somewhere nearby, it can compete with the puppets. It can go on forever, Leo said. That is that warrior is a puppet of the dead man's soul grass? She asked, as if frightened. So, the more corpses there are, the more puppets can fight? She asked, with her eyes wide open. This mysterious place is dangerous. We must get out of here now, the boy exclaimed, moving on. There's an entrance. There is no one around him. Olivia pointed to the portal. It seems everyone else is looking for the treasure inside. Leo answered her. It's strange I can't get through, said the girl. She touched her hand to the multicolored rainbow portal, and it was as if she had touched glass or a closed door. Of course, the mysterious place doesn't want to let us out, said the boy, as if he understood the secret meaning of what was happening. Leo, what should we do now? She asked the guy. It looks like we have to unravel the mystery of the dead man's soul grass, or wait until someone else snatches it away, he replied. Otherwise, everyone will die! He finished explaining to the girl what he himself understood only now. Be careful, he turned to Olivia, because he came across someone's dried skeleton lying on the ground. These monster corpses can become puppets. They will rise up at any second, he explained to the girl. In front of them were many dead bodies of huge evil monsters. The aroma comes from there, said one of the Ice Valley warriors. They had already smelled the intoxicating, distinct smell emanating from the plant. There, exclaimed one of the warriors. Go ahead. The others supported him. Inhale more. This must be a rare treasure. The exclamations of the warriors were heard. Isn't this the boy who insulted the glacial valley? Asked one of the warriors, pointing to Leo and Olivia, walking ahead. We meet again. Even though you beat one of us, you can't handle them all. If you beg us for mercy on your knees, we will not kill you.
the warriors turned to the boy. I don't need more corpses, he answered them completely calmly. Leave while you're alive, the boy exclaimed with complete confidence, turning to them. I have never seen a person who was so arrogant before his own death, said the warrior with a sharp sword in his hand, laughing heartily. Surround him! The guy with the saber gave the command. His eyes shone with anger and revenge. We are looking at you from everywhere. We'll kill you, and then we'll have fun with this girl, they said, surrounding the couple. All the warriors were armed with sharp, shiny sabers. Jin Pavilion also sent people here, Olivia said. She was outraged by such dishonest behavior of the warriors. There is no one alive around. No one will know that you are from the Jin Pavilion. One of the warriors answered her, licking the cold metal of his dagger with his tongue. Forward! The warriors exclaimed and raised their heavy, sharp swords. Their eyes burned with anger and thirst for battle. And then it was as if something strange and incomprehensible happened to one of the warriors of the Ice Valley. It was as if some force had struck him with an arc of a powerful violet stream of light. Leo looked at this in surprise. He caught every movement happening around him. The warrior flew upward and turned over from the shockwave. The sword flew out of his hands and sparks flew, striking him and the other warriors. What is this? Other people of the Ice Valley exclaimed. Their faces turned white with fear, and the teeth began to tremble. Those who remained alive stood clutching their weapons, as if frozen in place. And in front of us, a monster who had recently fought with Leo was waving his hooked, sharp sword. I wonder if he's the only one resurrected, even though there are so many bodies around, the boy said, sharing his observations with Olivia. I will chop into pieces everyone who touched the people of the Glacial Valley, exclaimed one of the surviving warriors and he prepared his sword to attack the fearless immortal shadow. Hey, don't do this, run away quickly, Leo said, making a gesture with his hand as if stopping them. They will kill you. Run, he shouted, addressing the still living warriors. And the shadow monster was already circling around again, attacking the surviving warriors. They scattered like things around the area, losing their weapons. The boy put his hand to his head. Since he tried to warn the warriors of the ice valley, but they didn't listen to him at all. Meanwhile, the monster stood in the middle of the battlefield, having won, and many souls flew to him from the dead bodies of the warriors. He inhaled each dead soul, as if feeding on it. His eyes glowed with a bright crimson light, and the body was dark brown. Meanwhile, a pronounced smell continued to emanate from the magical plant spreading throughout the area. The smell attracted everyone around who was still alive. Only an orange train was visible, stretching like a scarf. What's that sweet smell? The other warriors exclaimed, including Leo's ex-wife. This aroma reached them all the way. The aroma has become stronger, said the boy. He felt it better than the others, because he was endowed with special skills. Let's find a safe place first, Leo exclaimed. And taking Olivia's hand, he rushed out of there. Sleep here and don't get caught by the puppet. He turned to the girl, giving instructions. I'll come as soon as it's all over, he said, hiding the girl in the distance behind a huge heavy stone. And he himself returned to where everything happened. The puppet stood in front of another corpse, greedily inhaling a new soul. Now I will finish with you once and for all, the boy exclaimed and prepared to strike. He squeezed his strong hand, which glowed with blue cold fire. But then the boy noticed out of the corner of his eye a bright blue bird flying towards him. You again, said the boy, immediately turning around. Everywhere he looked, someone with a desire to kill was cutting his hair. Leo, you will pay for the students of the Ice Valley, exclaimed the woman with the heart of a snake. She approached him and with her powerful blow destroyed the stone ground. The boy jumped back in time. I will absorb this grass of the heavenly soul myself, so you must die now. Florence continued to squeal, attacking the boy with threats. Stop! You should ask me before you touch Leo. A guy named Robin intervened, appearing as if out of nowhere. The woman looked at him with her evil and very insidious gaze, after which she laughed terribly and very uncivilly loudly. Already drool splashed around from her loud laughter. I don't want to upset you, but Dan began to speak in turn. The guy raised his finger up, as if trying to explain something important. But I will say that only I will get this grass. He finished the sentence he started, and he showed the class with his thumb. 
The boy smiled sarcastically. The young master said that Leo was her brother. I have to help him if we meet, Robin decided, remembering a sweet girl named Isla. Out of the way, don't interfere. Now I'll deal with the woman who dared to treat Leo like that, the guy exclaimed. And taking out a red card in bright yellow rays, he rushed towards Florence, drawing his sharp sword. Who let the child in here? said the woman with the heart of a snake, standing in front of him in a fighting pose. The fire talisman can even kill a Yuan realm master. Get on your knees and beg for mercy. Otherwise, no kingdom of great physical strength will save you. Robin exclaimed, boldly rushing forward. Don't underestimate the kingdom of great physical strength. Florence answered him immediately, and she prepared her large glowing ball to strike the guy with a counter blow. Your stubbornness will destroy you, Robin continued, flying up to her in a high jump, wielding a red fire card. They seemed to fly apart during the impact, but they were able to split the first stream of the woman's powerful attack. Phoenix, dance! exclaimed Florence, and she spun around as if in the dance of her huge blue bird. Ice pyramid, she said, preparing a blow even stronger than before. Everything around her shone blue, like an icy flame, which was pierced by the bright red fire of the boy's card. What? Was she really able to stop the talisman's flame? Robin asked. After all, his cards seemed to begin to burn, falling in torn pieces to the ground. Florence whirled like a bluebird and began to fly up to the boy with a bright wave of icy cold flow of power. The spirit of this woman is very unusual. It cannot be compared with the realm of great physical strength, Robin thought to himself, squeezing the hilt of his sharp sword as tightly as possible. Ice Spirit of the Fifth Level She interested me, said the puppet, looking at the ongoing battle. The monster's eyes immediately lit up. She directed her fiery demonic gaze straight at the woman. Yes, the puppet exclaimed and rushed towards Florence. The rest of the warriors were also in this clearing. Run from there, Leo said, addressing all the soldiers. He made a gesture with his hand, trying to reach them, because he knew what a powerful immortal shadow this was. It seems that you are the genius of the Qing family from Tian Shui, right? Dan addressed him. I wanted to offer you the unification of the Qing Tian Shui family with the Qing family of the imperial capital, the guy suggested to him. Haven't you had your eye on my vault ring? Don't bullshit me, the boy answered him, showing his glowing green ring on his finger. This is a rare opportunity for your family. Stop being a side branch and become part of the main family, Dan continued to persuade him. Don't crumple, he asked him. Sorry, but I don't have time to chat with you. The boy answered him as if he had cut him off and went about his business. You must find the one who controls the puppet. If you can't, then we will all die, he finally told the warriors. Fifth level spirit. Spirit of the fifth level? The puppet wailed to itself. She licked her lips in anticipation of a new strong soul. Why did he run after me? Florence thought turning around. She was very scared because she didn't yet know what this monster was capable of. Florence prepared to repel the attack. The monster warrior had already raised his bladed weapon above the woman's head. She tried to fight off the attack, and in turn, there seemed to be a lot of puppets. It was as if she had been cloned. Her attack was so strong and dexterous. Here's the payback, stubborn one, exclaimed Robin. He opened his mouth with joy. Don't stand still. Look for a place where you can hide. Leo turned to the guy. You too better take your people away. None of you can resist this puppet, he said to a guy named Dan. Meanwhile, the puppet kept trying to deal with Florence. She really wanted to get a strong soul of the fifth level. Ice Pyramid! exclaimed the woman with a snake heart, and directed all her strength and power towards the monster. He, in turn, repelled with his sword, blocking the attack of the evil woman. Huge blocks of ice scattered to the sides from the powerful blocking of the warrior. But the main blow fell directly on the monster, and it was as if he found himself inside, imprisoned in an ice pyramid. And this is all that the warrior of the sword is capable of. Who forced Leo to hide with his tail between his legs? The woman engaged, but it was not there. The huge ice pyramid began to crack little by little. Rays of crimson light began to break out. What? exclaimed Florence. This time she turned red with horror as she threw all her strength towards the enemy. The monster warrior emerged from captivity, destroying a powerful block of ice. The fragments scattered to the sides and scattered on the ground. What? How was he able to break through the ice pyramid? The woman asked. 
streams of sweat ran down her face, and Leo stood on the side, as if wondering what to do. He watched as the monster warrior flew up to the woman with another blow. Florence may die, the boy said to himself. Apparently, he planned to come to the woman's aid. The more the grass kills the dead man's soul, the stronger it becomes, the boy thought and still rushed forward. If this puppet kills Florence, a warrior with a level 5 spirit, he will become stronger than anyone in the Empire. I can't let that happen, the boy exclaimed as he walked towards them. This stupid woman never does anything good. If there weren't people here, I would never have saved you, Leo said, and clenched his strong fist in preparation for an attack. Stop, the guy said, and delivered a powerful kick to the puppet's body. Die already, the guy continued. The boy's second blow hit the monster warrior in the face. The teeth were already shattered from such a strong blow. The puppet spun in the air after making several flips and then fell to the ground with a roar. Sparks flew all around. Plumes of smoke and dust rose upward. The boy, in turn, landed beautifully, leaning on one knee. And the woman also flew down from the blow of the puppet. Leo, why did you help me? Florence turned to him. She held her hand to her bruised, wounded cheek. Make no mistake, I only did this because he could become a problem. I won't even blink an eye if you die, he explained very clearly to Florence. And the puppet, in turn, has already risen from the dead. The warrior rose again, emerging from the clouds of thick smoke. Hide quickly, weak warriors like you will not survive in this place, Leo said, turning to the woman with the heart of a snake. 